Kick the type of shit that only winners can Call me Mr. Long Slong, itchy in a hand Bitch, I been a man, moving like a businessman Mobbing Dolo, probably canceling our dinner plan Keep my lungs full of gas with some gold on my collar Acting stingy with these Benjis, ho, I need every dollar Got a Dutchie full of spice and a Spice Girl choosing Got them mad at the guard cause they product game moving I been heavy stepping on them like a triple chin, ho I'm like, what the fuck you mean? Please come again, ho Niggas steady playing games, but they never win, no Scoring every time I touch down like the end zone Told them I cannot apologize I keep it bug 50, my beginning came from winning You ain't gotta fuck with me, I'm the top tier shotter This is not for the L.O. Putting coochie on my face and putting ops in my reto Throwing hands at your public school Probably smash away your cousin too Bending corners while I'm bending rules All that shit you talking, it ain't nothing new Tell them put it in my hand with no lip service I been a man, bitch, I been working Put it in my hand with no lip service Ho, oh, I been a man, got my wrist working Ayy, levitating only like a legend can All my shit be slapping like eleven hands Got them playing catch up, they in last place Serving niggas dust, it's like a drag race Dummy think he winning, make me Ellen Mayo I'm with my yellow bone mommy with color mayo And while you on your way to clocking on my way to Caicos I know that all you do is hate, that's all you had to say though I give not a single fuck how you feel to be real They been bluffing, they don't know just how it feel to be real Pulling weight for the squad, winning at the tug of war He ain't put you on no game, shout it what you fuck him for Nothing less and nothing more than the ill this nigga in it, been in corners on my pivot, doing donuts, doing digits. Got my hoodie, cushions in it. I'm a motherfucking legend. Used to pick her up at seven, had her back around eleven. Throwing hands at your public school. Like Probably smash you away your cousin too. Like been in corners while I'm bending rules. Like All that shit you talking, it ain't nothing new. Like Tell them put it in my hand with no lip service. I been a man, bitch, I been working Put it in my hand with no lip service Oh, I been a man, got my wrist working Ay, ay Look I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me Never need no push, I do it all for me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Look, papa don't preach, teachers don't teach Gon' reach, that's facts I ain't worried about none of that I'm making that cash day. Bunch of O's like NASCAR, but it's really more like NASDAQ. Why they thinking that they hot when they really more like Quota on me like a referee. Hating what they'll never be. Small top with a big bottom, yeah. Shorty shape like a letter D. Let her have it, then I let her be. If you love it, gotta let it grow. Crazy cause you really never know. When I'm hurting, never let it show. I'm a two tone, two phone, two chain, new thing, lane with, but you a broke. Low class, no cash, certified lame I been getting to it like I ought to Couldn't pick so I bought two Understand why your chick came I'm just trying to figure why she brought you I'm really reppin' and I'm flexed up And I ain't gotta tell them I'm next up Sleep on the they rest up But I'm up and I'm getting my checks up Me and the fellas be high as propellers Ain't like could tell us we great Looking at like how do you figure Unless you can talk about a figures I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me Never need no push, I do it all for me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Look how we litty, we 
turned up the city, we raising the bar height. I been finessing, just look at them stressing, yeah, they been on all night. Sipping this water with somebody, daughter, she take what I taught her and build on it. Came in this game on that today, ain't in a couple years later, we still on it. Be hating on it, be waiting on it like a new season. I bet an acre on it, I put some paper on it like I'm loose leafing. Buying them assets, build me a cash net, I could fall in. Look at my last bit, ain't got a tiptoe, I'm all in. Think on a level that can't fail, and I roll me a J with the hate mail. Been doing good on the merch sale, all this bread on me look like a bake sale. Tell her your what's really good, I'll be really good on a jaw jack. Send an email about the bread, I'ma hit you back with the call back. I'm too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me. Never need no push, I do it all for me. Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me. Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be. Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me. Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me. Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me. Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be. hit that like button let me know where you guys are checking in from how's everybody feeling this sunday night i'm not gonna keep y'all long i swear this one gonna be an in and out because it ain't even something that requires that much time it's just something that <clears throat> i think needs to be said going into 2024 because i see a lot of people that are coming to the channel that are asking the question now is it the right time now they looking to start I know tax time is coming around. I understand business. I know business. I've been around for a long time and I know there's always a lot of new entrants into business, not just trucking, just into different industries, period. period. During tax time is new uh, business people because a lot of people get that lump sum of money and they have a plan that when they get their taxes, they gonna go get a box truck, they gonna go do this they're gonna start a shopify store they're gonna open a boutique whatever the case may be so i know that's why there's a trend of a lot of people that are starting to research 
uh, from an, a new entrant um, um, uh, perspective, all right? So this is pretty much for you, you know what I'm saying? This is pretty much for you, and I feel like it's important to, you know, tell you what you need to hear and what you need to think about um, and the full overall perspective of starting a business, all right? So, you know, I'm going to tell you what you need. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. It may not be what you're expecting to hear, but it is going to be the truth. And it's going to be the truth from someone who started from humble beginnings, all right? I started from humble beginnings, um, and I'm going to explain to you how you should get started. So come on in, hit that like button. Let me know what you're checking in. I see Mark Brown, Nikki Burns, Devontae Smalls, Giorgio Brown, SD Walt. Shout out to all the moderators. Big Hearn, what up? Uh, Ken Hooten, what up? Michael, what up? Washington in the building. STL in the building. I see Cleveland in the building. Jonathan, what up, bro? Much respect. Hope all is well with you and the family. Appreciate it. All is well. Hope all is well with you and the family. INGS Logistics, what up? J. Cole, what up? San Antonio, Detroit, Spoken, Michigan. Charlotte, South Carolina is in the building. All right, let's just get straight to it because I don't want to be on here too long. I see OTR Ray in the building. Hope you doing well, OTR Ray, and your new journey into the world of semi-trucking. All right, so the title is How I Would Start If I Was Coming Into the Space Right Now. All right, so I'm giving you it from a point of, from a point of view of someone who's done it someone who did it in a different generation. So I know, you know, from an advanced point of view, if I were to, let's say, re-enter, I would be re-entering from an advanced point of view from someone who knows how to do it. So from someone who has has always have, has already been through the learning curve. So I know what to avoid. I know what to do. I know how to do it. I know how to look at what I'm working with and which lane to go in, where I'm going to be able to, see my most success, right? Working with whatever I'm working with, all right? So we're gonna get into this. I'm not gonna speak from a point of view of someone who's coming into an industry with a bag because just cause you got a bag don't mean that you're going to succeed. A lot of people think, okay, I got a bag. I can come in, I can buy this truck, I can do this. They got all these dreams, right? But they still don't have the knowledge, right? Uh, coming up, you know, uh, during the 90s, especially in the 2000s when I was in my 20s, I saw a lot of people from my city that had a big old bag of money and they all wanted to be rappers. The people who had the bag of money couldn't rap. But it was always a shorty in the neighborhood that could really rap that just didn't have the money. The people who had the money failed at rapping. The people who could rap really good didn't have the money. So the person who had the money that was a rapper, he was a bad business person as a rapper. Most people that I saw in the 2000s from my city that had money, they were bad business people in the music industry because they could have easily invested their money into someone that could rap and they would have made their money, right? Same thing with the box truck business. Just because you coming into the business and you got a big old bag don't equate to success. A lot of people that think I'm coming in with money is going gonna, is gonna to equate to success. No. Information and knowledge is what equates to success. I'm not going to speak from that perspective. The perspective I want to speak from tonight is from a person who don't got nothing, right? Because that's speaking to the majority. The majority of people who start a business are starting from humble beginnings. The majority, all right? All right, so I want to speak to the, the majority, all right? How would I enter into the box truck business in 2024? All right. Knowing what I know. All right. So I'm going to give you everything you need to sit down. Right. So you need to take notes or, you know, make sure you re replay the, the live stream. Right. So the first thing I would look at when I sat down, the first thing I would look at would be my living, my living expenses. What does it cost me to live month to month? Right. What how much does it cost me to live? Right. So I would assess my living. Mark, what does your living got to do with the box truck business? I'm going to tell you what it has to do with the box truck business. And this is for all the individuals who have never owned a business before. It's something that I got to put into perspective because I see that a lot of people who are new business owners, 
they don't put a lot of things into perspective. All right. You will no longer, if you leave the rat race, you leave your job, you leave your career, all right, you are leaving the rat race. So now everything is upon you. Everything. There's no HR person down the hallway that you can go to and put your, your time in for time off. There's no HR person that you can say, okay, I want to, you know, set up my 401k. There's no HR person that you can say, hey, I want to set up my dental, my health, my vision. Uh, you don't have any bereavement. There's no paternity or maternity pay. You don't have any uh, paid holidays. None of this stuff exists. It doesn't exist anymore. All right. Everything is solely on you when you become a business owner. All right. So with that, with that being said, you don't work, you don't eat. You have to see, OK, boom, this is what it costs me to live. All right. My bills are about five thousand dollars a month. We're going to make it modest. All right. We're going to make it modest. I know some people's expenses are more. Some people's are less. These are things that you need to think about. Why? You might have a family. You might have two or three kids. You may currently be the breadwinner in that household. You may make $100,000 a year. Your wife or your partner or whatever the case may be may only make fifty, dollars or may not work at all. And you got two kids and a dog. That $100,000 that you're making, that's pretty much guaranteed. As long as you take your behind to work, you do what you're supposed to do, they're going to pay you. And on top of the pen, you're going to get all those perks, those days off, those holiday pay days. They're going to pay into your 401k. They're going to max you on your health, your dental. You gonna, your kids are going to be able to reap the benefits of you working for that job so you can add them to your insurance. So now they can go get their cavities filled and, you know, uh, uh, they can get their teeth cleaned every six months. Your wife, whether she makes less than you or don't work at all, you can add her to your health insurance plan. So now she's able to go get her teeth full. She got a hole in it too, so they can go do the root canal. She needs you, you, you reap the benefits of all that. All that's out the window now. It's out the window, but it's on you. You got to pay that, right? So now you got to look to see what it costs you to live, what you need to bring in to your household, Right. And now you need to go research whatever it is that you want to do. OK, you want to get into the box strokes business. All right. So start with general research. What's the profit margin or first start with this? How much does a box truck owner operator make? Now, if you go looking for that, you're probably not going to be able to find general information on that. If you do a general Google search, there's not a lot of information on, on a on a on Google, right, for box truck business, right? You got to really deep down in like some forums, YouTube, things of that nature to find information when it pertains to box truck. And even then when you get into these different sectors of social media, then you got to like wean out all the BS and kind of find creators uh, that actually have knowledge on the space, all right? Right. So doing once you find what a general box truck makes. Right. Also, before you do that, you need to figure out what sector of box trucking you want to go into. So you need to research the different lanes. All right. Of box trucking. All right. There's a few different things you can do. You might want to do Amazon Relay. Right. You might want to go OTR. You might want to do Final Mile. You might say, OK, I'm looking at a Final Mile, but I don't want to do big and bulky. You know, upon your final mile research, you saw that you could do big and bulky, which is going to require another person or two. Or you can do curbside, which only requires one person. Right. Doing further search, you say, you know what? I could start a moving company. Moving pays more than all these different lanes. Right. But that's going to require more people. Right. So now once you determine, OK, what sector all right, you want to go into <clears throat> a box trucking, now you need to see. What does it make? Let's say you want to go OTR. All right. You do some deep research. You go to YouTube. You find some good creators and you settle up on a guy named Mark the Mentor. He tells you the average box trucker that's running OTR right now, depending on their, you know, how they work, what their relationships are, is making somewhere on the low end 
on the low end. And, and just because it's on the low end, that just means those people aren't necessarily working. And on the high end, the average box trucker that I'm seeing right now that I come across is running OTR is making somewhere between twelve and a half thousand a month to twenty thousand a month. All right. So obviously that twenty thousand a dollar a month gross person is averaging around five thousand dollars a week. All right. Now the majority average that I'm seeing is around two to three thousand a week. All right. That's on the, the grand scheme of things, the average box trucker that's running over the road right now is making about two to three thousand a week. I've done multiple polls on this. All right. That guy who's really, really running, he's making somewhere between four to five. All right. So now that you got an average on what a box trucker is making, you say, OK, so if I really, really run hard, I, you know, I, I set up relationships, you know, I'm making twenty thousand on on a gross average a month. That's around two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. But that's not guaranteed. That's not guaranteed. And remember, you got to go through the learning curve. So now after you figure out what an average box truck makes, now you need to look into the margins. How much does it cost to run a box truck business? All right. Now, something like this you can find on Google. General trucking business profit margin are about two and a half to six percent. Now, you probably gonna look at that, you probably gonna be like, yo, that's low. Well, profit margins in trucking are low. Profit margin in trucking is very low. There's a lot of expenses in trucking. There's a lot of fixed expenses. There's a lot of variable expenses, right? There's a lot of unforeseen expenses, all right? So the margins in trucking are low, all right? Now, my career, average profit margin, 20%, which is great. Now, to a person who's never been in trucking, you're going to think 20% is low. But that's actually on the high end, believe it or not. All right. And I've talked about how I was able to maintain a 20 percent profit margin. I'm not going to really touch on that right now because I don't want to be on here long. And I'm just telling you, the person who's a new entrant into the space, some of the things that you need to consider while making your decision on getting into this business. And I'm speaking to a person who started from humble beginnings. Right. So now that you've done the research on the lanes, you've done a little research on what the average box trucker makes. Right. Uh, and, and, and that can that what the average box truck can make can vary depending on what lane. All right. So up to twenty thousand, let's say OTR. Same thing with with final mile. Amazon can kind of fluctuate because that's really market dependent. There's a lot of variables when it comes to running Amazon Relay. I personally have never ran Amazon Relay. I hear people talking that are content creators that I watch. Um, I know there's one that, you know, has two trucks. His trucks average about $140,000 to $150,000 a year gross. Uh, there's another one where someone who sent me a message the other day, he said he made $140,000 this year. So based on, you know, the content creators in comparison to subs that I know that dish out their numbers, the ones who have done exceptionally well, the numbers do kind of add up to about, 140 to 150 now mind you these are guys that are running hard these are guys that are running hard and that's the gross number all right so amazon let's say one truck about 150 on the high end per truck let's say uh and this is based off information that i've received all right and watched all right can't really attest to it just for you know for informational purpose now for otr average let's say you really really running hard consistently and you can keep somewhere around that five thousand you're looking about 240 final mile depending on the contract how many days a week you're running and like i said depending on the contract obviously if you're running an appliance contract depending on your market you're going to do around that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar per truck uh mark as well all right so now that you know how much each lane makes you know the margins, you break it down even further. OTR, all right? There's more uh, expenses involved in OTR, right? There's more liability, right? More expenses, why? Because you're running over the road. So you got more variable costs, more fuel, all right? Potentially more breakdowns because you're running the truck a lot harder than a person who 
is running locally. Person who's running locally isn't running that hard. They're not burning that much fuel because they're local. All right. So a person who is local profit margin may be slightly higher than the person who's running OTR. Depending if you're running curbside final mile locally, you're just depending on you. You don't need a helper. You're doing 15, let's say, stops. You're in a big market that's high density. You may have a tight route. So you're saving a lot more money versus that person that's running their truck hard, OTR. These are all the things that you need to keep in mind, right? You also need to understand your market. There's people that come out here, they watch content, right? And uh, they get all excited and they don't understand how to research and uh, at the business that they're getting into. You got to understand what you're investing in. If you live in the middle of nowhere, you can't be like, yo, I'm going to do final mile, I'm going to do curbside final mile, and then you go out and spend all this money, and then you want to go look for, for work, and it ain't no work, and then you come to me, and then you get mad at me because I make you feel bad because I'm telling you the truth and tell you you should have did all this research before you bought the truck, and you feel like I'm talking down on you, this, that, and the third, because I'm not telling you what you want to hear, and then you get mad. This is the research that you need to do before that. Listen, if you're in the middle of nowhere, the only option you may have is running OTR. Ain't no Amazon near you. Ain't no final mile. You live in a city with a population of 15,000 people. You in an area where Amazon sends a truck from the major city 150 miles out to drop off at the post office so the post office can deliver y'all stuff, the final leg or the final mile. They don't have no fulfillment centers out there in the middle of nowhere. They're going to send a relay guy to drive overnight, to drop it off at the post office, drop it off at multiple post offices in the middle of nowhere, and then they're going to deliver your stuff. They're going to put it in your mailbox if it's small, like a phone case, or they're going to set it on your front porch. But you had no plans of going OTR, but you didn't do your research. So now you're stuck with this piece of equipment and, 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 and in the middle of nowhere. Now you're forced to do something you don't want to do and you don't even want to do that. So now the truck's sitting. This is all the stuff that you got to think about. This is the stuff that a lot of people who create content, especially on Instagram, you dig what I'm saying? Don't tell you. They tell you the stuff that you want to hear to get you excited. Then you run into Mark, and Mark telling you all this stuff, and then I get I get the uh the title as the doom and gloom guy. When I'm just telling you what it is. It ain't doom and gloom, it's it's the facts. You're gonna run into it anyway. So you rather hear it now, or you rather run into it unexpectedly and then had had the goofy look. I'm trying to present prevent you from having the goofy look. I want you to know what, what's coming up so you can know how to deal with it. You know how to tackle it, get through it, move around it so you can get to the next level. So now that you, you did all that, you, you figure, okay, boom, it's costing me $5,000 a month. So you know that your business has to generate enough income so that you can the business can sustain on its own and the business can pay you so that you can take care of your business. Bruh, this is not the business right now. Don't listen to this, man. Hey, uh, Pippi, are you in here? Hold on, you know what we're gonna do? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. If this is not the business, I'm gonna drop the link. You come up and you tell me what the business is then. Ivan Sanchez. I ain't even hating, but the box truck business is not better. Investment is to get your class A. Bro, I haven't even got into the nitty gritty of the show yet. <laughs> no, he's a real person. Hold on. My camera froze. I haven't even got into the nitty gritty of the show yet. And they already he's already in here hating. I haven't told nobody. You ain't even let me. You ain't even let me. Start the show. 
I ain't even hating, but the box truck business is not better investment. Get your class A. He ain't even let me start the show to even say nothing. I ain't even got to the point yet. That little link, though, I haven't, since you know, come on up. Because I just started five minutes ago. I'm telling people what they need to think about going into starting a business. I haven't even said shit about a box truck yet. I'm giving people general business information that are new business owners on what they need to think about. I'm talking about looking at your personal expenses at home and you saying, don't start a box truck business. I ain't even said shit about a box truck business yet. So come on here and hit this link since you got the answers. Make sure you bring your uh, uh, 1120S too. I, I don't have time for it tonight, bro. I'm sitting up here taking time out of my day telling people what to consider when starting a business and you talking about get a class A. What that got to do with what I'm talking about? So come on up here. You got the answers. Get the link. Come on up here. Make sure you bring your tax forms. Any other time, I'll just let it go. But you got the answers. So come on up here. And he's talking about box truck. Who talking about? I ain't said shit about a box truck yet. Nothing. I'm telling people to, man, understand what it costs you to live. Know your market, market analysis. <laughs> Things to consider before starting your business. Understanding that once you leave your job, you leave the rat race, everything is up to you. And you said, don't listen to this man. Tell me what I said so far about a box truck, Ivan. Now he's quiet. Y'all see why I dropped the link? You see why I dropped the link? Because this is how you get rid of people. You don't run, you don't back down from nothing, especially if you know what you're talking about been doing this shit for damn near 14 years you come in the room you say don't listen you're not hating but get your class a i ain't said shit about a box truck everything i've said up to this point are things are to consider before you start any business i started i said it don't even got to be a box truck business. you can start a shopify business a boutique i said all this shit here we go see now now here's a guy Look at it. Let's put it on the screen. I started a box truck business because of y'all YouTube gurus. First of all, I'm not a YouTube guru. Second of all, I wasn't even creating content during the pandemic. And I failed. I'm not hating, but I wouldn't start one right now. You said the ultimate plan to launch your box truck business. That's what the title says. But if you come in the room and you sit down and get cool and get comfortable and listen to the brother, then you'll see where I'm coming from. You come in based on a title and e immediately get upset because you had issues listening to the wrong people, which I said a few minutes ago. Don't listen to these people who ain't never ran a business, who just created content. I said that probably before you came in. I, I'm telling people on things to consider. And if I would have known you before you started a box truck business, the things that I'm telling people now. You would have got this information and you probably it probably would have prevented you from making some of the mistakes you made. But you want to come in here upset because of something somebody else did to you. That don't got nothing to do with me. So what I'm going to ask you to do is chill out for a second before you get come in all upset and listen to what I have to say. First. All right. Now, getting back to it. After you figure out what it costs you to live, you have to understand that when you start a business, the business has to sustain, right? And also the business has to pay you so that you can take care of your living expenses, your family, your home, all right? One of the main thing that I see people do because they listen to people that he probably listened to is you get into a box truck business or you get into any business, you're going to instantly 
be successful. You're going to make a million dollars. But they don't understand and they don't teach you because they probably don't know that the business has to cash flow. And that when you become a business owner, there may be sometimes, especially at the beginning, where you're trying to conquer that learning curve, where you may go day, weeks, months without being able to pay yourself. As the business owner, you are the last person to get paid. The business has to get paid before you because the business has the cash flow. These are things that you need to consider before you start a business. Am I able right now at this time in my life to take this risk? If you got a family, you got two kids and you're uh, the head of the household, you're the sole provider. Are you in a situation where you're able to take that risk? How much working capital do you have saved up? It's not going to be you get in and won't bam, thank you, man, Phew, off to the races. It's not going to be like that for everybody. It's not going to be like that for most people. The learning curve cost. And depending on which lane you enter, it's going to determine how much it's going to cost you. There's a hierarchy in trucking. You got the semi trucks up here. Obviously, the cost of entry to entering into the semi truck business is a lot higher than entering into the box truck business. Then you got the cargo van business. Then under that, you have a new entry into logistics right now, which would be the gig economy, which you could do with your personal vehicle, right? So now you're coming into the logistics industry. You want to get in. I'm speaking from a person who wants to enter from humble beginnings. You don't have shit. You ain't got a pot to piss in, nor a window to throw it out of. You work a regular job, nine to five, but you heard some guy on the internet said, start a box truck biz, you could make a gazillion dollars. So now you bright eyed, bushy tail, you want to start a box truck business. You got limited resources like most new entrepreneurs have. You hear this stuff on the Internet talking about Navy Federal, start your LLC. And to the young man, Ivan Sanchez, if you follow the content, I tell people you should start an LLC, especially if you're getting into trucking, depending on how. You want to or you might want to scale up. It may be better to get incorporated. See, you got to follow the channel before you come in here starting trouble, man, because I'll get you. You know, we dropped the link over here, man. All right, so boom. You come in, you, 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 I left off, okay, with the, with the, uh, the, the, um, the gig stuff. Boom. So now, boom, you know what? You don't got nothing. You working with limited resources. You listen to these guys. They say, go get a, 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 a LLC. Now you can go get a, a credit card under your business. You can go do this under your business. You can go do that under business, and it's all cap. All right? Let me tell you something. Ain't no bank going to give you no loan when you're a new business. Stop listening to people. You know why? You know why they're not going to give you a loan? You know why? Because most businesses fail within the first year. Is that doom and gloom or is that the truth? It's the truth. Why don't you think banks give businesses loans? Because it's too risky. Nine times out of ten, you're going to fail. Because most new businesses fail. A bank ain't going to sit down and talk to you until you've been in business for two to three years, depending on the bank. And that's a fact. So now, as a new business person who started from humble beginnings, X the banks out the equation. That was cap. You want to go get a hard money loan? You can X that out the equation too. Cabbage is no longer around. You got companies like On Deck, Credibly, places like that. They've up their minimum to one year now. I wouldn't recommend those anyway. 
So you know what happens with a lot of new people that are coming into the business and why a lot of new people fail that are coming into the box truck business or the semi-truck business or the cargo van business or any other business because they lack the resources because a lot of institutions that lend money do not want to give to new business owners because there's a high probability you're going to fail. And that's not doom and gloom. That's a fact because most new businesses fail. So what do people do, right? Because they're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, because they watch guys that Ivan Sanchez probably watched, right? And they got excited and jumped out the window, right? <laughs> and jumped out the window and, 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 and went and did something they shouldn't have did. You know what they went and did? They went and took out a subprime loan or they went and got an equipment loan. At 24.99%. So now they got a truck that they bought for 50000 that they're paying 100000 for. A lot of people don't look at the contract. A lot of these companies are predatory. And I've been looking at these contracts lately. So if you come to me and you ask me, Mark, look at this contract. I'm going to tell you no all day long. And that's what I tell people, no. So you can X that out the equation too. You got box truck dreams. You got cargo van money. And some people got box truck dreams and they probably don't even have cargo van money. So, Mark, what do I do? You don't have nothing. You got to start from humble beginnings. So this is what I would do. I would do the same thing that I did in 2010 as a person who didn't have nothing. I would utilize what I have. Well, Mark, what do you mean? You got a car? You got a pickup truck? You got an SUV? There's logistics companies that you can go to and run routes in your personal vehicle. Of course, they're not going to pay as much as a cargo van. Of course, they're not going to pay as much as a box truck. Of course, they're not going to pay as much as whatever when you're going up the higher hierarchy. Five, 5K, Matt, just not worth it, man. First, I was 21. Insurance was $3,000. All right, let me, let me get on Ivan Sanchez. Now I see what the issue is. Let me write a, a, a note. Let me write a note. Where did I leave off at? Where did I leave off at? I'm talking about um, st uh, start with what you have, with what you have. All right, check this out, uh, Ivan Sanchez. You're 21 years old. That was strike one. Not to say you can't start a business at 21, but being 21, everything is going to be high. Do you know why everything is going to be high? Because you're more, more risk than anybody. You're young. Your insurance is going to be sky high. Why? Because you're 21. Your insurance is going to be sky high in a personal car because you're 21. Why? Because people under 25 historically have accidents. Most people under 25 are not responsible when behind the wheel of a vehicle. Now, put that on steroids a little bit. Now you're behind the wheel of a commercial vehicle. A commercial vehicle that's carrying cargo. It's dangerous. There's a lot of liability at stake. And at 21, you're still, you're still not an experienced driver. So your insurance is going to be sky high regardless. I don't care what content creator you looked at. Jesus Christ could have been the content creator. And when you went to the insurance company, your insurance was going to be sky high. All right. That's the first thing. No, because I have to let you know something. You come in here and you, you ain't followed the channel and you want to talk and jump out the window and you don't even know what's going on. All right. So let me get you together, young man. Let me get you together. And you take this constructive criticism, young man. You see these grays? All right, then respect these grades. I set everything up. I went through a third party to get Amazon Relay. They never paid on time. 
You went through a third party to do Amazon Relay? Second. Like, for what? You could have went to their website, signed up yourself, and did it on your own. Why would you go through a third party? So you come in here because you had bad experiences. That don't speak for the totality of the industry. That speaks for your decision-making skills. Instead of coming in here and chilling out and learning something from the OG, you want to come in here and express your grievances based on experience you had with other people and just being young and naive in general. What you mean? Your insurance is going to be high as all hell. You're only 21 years old. I'm 43. I'm twice your age. You weren't even 10 years old when I started in 2010. Fall back and listen, you are gonna learn something. All right, where do we leave off? So boom, if you don't have the capital, you need to start with what you got. And that's, that's the truth, all right? Going and getting these subprime loans, going and getting these equipment loans is a sure way to failure. You're going to pay 25%, 24.99%. That's the max they can charge you. And a lot of people that go this route, this is what they're paying. I looked at one today and he said I could talk about it. I might even show it to y'all. He said it's okay. $58,000 truck, 24.99%, equipment loan, new business owner. No resources. No one else is going to give you an opportunity. He said, Mark, I fell victim like Ivan did, except he admitted it. He said, Mark, I fell victim to everything you talk about. I got caught up in the pandemic hype. Can you look at this? He said, share it with the with the with the with the subscribers. A fifty eight thousand dollar truck. He's paying over $90,000 for it. I said, didn't you know how much you was paying when they gave you the sheet for your monthly payments? When you do the math, $1,605 times 60 months, that's $90-something thousand. I said, man, I didn't even look at it. Watching Kirk channel, somebody else did the same thing. That excitement that you have initially, that excitement that you have initially, save that. Save that shit. You know why you should save it? Because that excitement is going to lead you to a multitude of mistakes. All right. Those critical mistakes that you make when you getting started, you need to not make those mistakes because those are going to determine if you're going to sink or swim. All that excitement at the beginning, what you excited for? You ain't did shit yet. People, oh, I got my LLC sitting on a box truck on Instagram like this. You ain't did shit yet. And all those people that did this post during the pandemic, majority of them failed. It ain't no time to celebrate. You know why they failed? Because a lot of them got these subprime loans. They went to Penske. They went to Ryder. They went through top mark funding or top whatever that is funding. And then they were the broker. And then they sent you to an equipment loan place that charged you 24.99% because you didn't do your due diligence because you was bright eyed and bushy tailed. They prey on people who don't have nothing. They understand that the resources are limited to a new business owner. So what am I trying to tell you? For a lot of people, if you don't have capital, cash on hand, 
or some way where you can secure this, where you can go and get a, maybe a, a, a credit union loan. Or if you're one of those people who have cash on hand where you can pay some cash and then you may be able to get a business line of credit. Some people have good personal credit where they're able to take out a personal loan and then loan that money to the business and then go purchase. See, it's different ways you can do it. But going the subprime route or the equipment loan route is not the way you want to do it at the beginning. It is a sure way to failure. Start with what you have. You don't have the resources. Boom. So you go and you go to T-Force listening to Mark because Mark ain't going to lead you down the wrong path. I'm not going to lead you down the wrong path. You know why I'm not going to lead you down the wrong path? Because I don't need people coming and saying, man, Mark told me to do the wrong thing. No, Mark ain't going to tell you to do the wrong thing. Mark going to tell you to do the right thing. Take your behind down to T-Force and go get you one of them routes that you can utilize your personal vehicle. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Right? And I could tell you this because I started from humble beginnings. Right? Humble yourself and utilize what you have. Go in there and get one of them guaranteed routes, one of them medical routes, or one of them e-commerce routes delivering packages from your car. Take your butt down to Amazon Flex and deliver packages from your car. Download, go share. Hopefully you can get a guaranteed dedicated route. If not, you can work off the board and start delivering stuff from your personal vehicle. Go to one rail. You got you a pickup, go rent you a damn six by 12 open trailer and start delivering for Lowe's. Go to Roadie. Start to pulling stuff from Walmart, Best Buy, download Spark. All right. I would start with the 3PL first. Why? I would go to something like T-Force first or one of the 3PLs. Why? Because now you're actually in a 3PL. So you're learning the logistics format. You're just utilizing your personal vehicle. And there's nothing wrong with that. I started in my damn pickup truck off of Craigslist. There was no gig economy. None of these apps existed in 2010. I didn't start fresh out the gate as a licensed moving company or a licensed final mile trucking company. I started with nothing. I started with what I had. Without a gear gap. I started on Craigslist. So it can happen. From there, you work that. You learn that. Ultimately, my putting money to the side. So that you can scale up. Now, not everybody has to go from a box truck down to a personal vehicle. Some people can go, you know what, I got box truck dreams, but I got cargo van money. So you may not enter with a box truck, but you may be, may be able to enter with a van. Now, here's the difference from entering with a van. Because you can go get a Ford Transit. You can go get a Ram Promaster. You can go get a Chevy Express. And what I would recommend, if you say you want to go get a Ford Transit, you're going to a Ford dealer. Now, it's a difference from buying a truck from Penske and Ryder because none of these institutions with those box trucks work with traditional banks. None of them work with traditional banks. Whereas if I want to go get a Ford Transit and I'm a new business owner, I got my corporation, I got my LLC. I take my articles of incorporation in there. I take my SS form, for form in there. I understand because I watch Marky Mark that I'm not going to be able to go in there and buy this Ford Transit off the strength of the company. I'm going to have to personally guarantee it. And I'm confident that I will be able to personally guarantee it because my credit, score, my credit score is a 770 or a 750 or a 705. I'm going to make sure that I find a Ford Transit at a Ford dealership. Now, when I go in there, I'm going to be able to go buy Ford Transit, personally guarantee it, because Ford works with banks, Chase, Bank of America, Ally, Wells Fargo,
you'll be more, it'll be more easier to go in there and acquire a piece of equipment than it would be to go to Ryder or Penske and then they're going to refer you to some broker and then some broker is going to refer you to some subprime or some equipment loan leasing place, which was going to rip you off for 24.99%. And they're not even going to show you the interest rate that you're paying. And then they're going to show you some form and then they're going to sell you this dream like everybody else. And you're going to sign it because you're bright eyed bushy tail and they know they got you because they know that if you knew better, you wouldn't even be filling out the application with them in the first place. And that's a fact. They knew if you knew better, you wouldn't even be on the phone. I'm not going to talk to none of them, period, ever in life. I wouldn't go talk to them. They know if you talking to them on the phone, if you putting in an application, that means they know you don't know better. Either you don't know better or you that desperate. And it's nothing wrong with that. If you don't know better, you just don't know better. That's why you got to educate yourself. You got to find you a mentor or somebody that you can consume information from that's going to lead you down the right path. Listen, it may not be for you to jump into the box truck business straight out the gate. It's a costly business. Shout out to all the super chats. I was cooking for a minute, man. I didn't want to lose my train of thought, man. Who, who, who left the super chat? Who left the super chat? Hold on. Ray, appreciate that super chat. Appreciate that super chat. Uh, and then somebody just um, I seen something else pop up. Uh, Jonathan, shout out to becoming a member. Oop, wrong one. So yeah, yeah. So straight out the gate, man. If you ain't got the money. Don't force it. You're going to go get you a subprime loan or an equipment leasing or equipment loan and you're going to be paying an arm and a leg. You're going to be paying twice as much for that truck. So you got to work with what you have. Look into the cargo van. Go to Ford. Go to Chevy. Go to Ram. Now you can deal with a traditional bank. Work that cargo van. Learn the industry. And then later scale up to a box truck. Now you have money coming in. You know the industry. You have relationships. So now that when you do scale up to that box truck, you've already went through the learning curve at a fraction of the cost. Also, competition is competitive. So not only do you got to go through the learning curve, you also got to compete. And depending on when you enter the market is going to depend on how fierce the competition is, right? That competition is fierce. So if you're a guy like Ivan, and I'm picking on you, Ivan, that's what we do over here. You, you came in here wrong. You came into somebody's house and you didn't show respect to the host. You came in here with in your feelings based off something somebody else led you down the wrong path. We don't lead people down the wrong path over here. So listen, young man, listen, you're going to learn you something. You're going to learn you something. Once you master that learning curve with the cargo van, it'll be easier to transition up into a box truck. You got relationships, you have the know-how now, and you know how to compete. You know going into the box truck business now, you have to enter with as low as overhead cost as possible. You understand how economical ramifications can affect your business at any time.
So you have this in mind. A lot of people didn't have that in mind a year and a half, two years ago. They thought that shit was going to last forever. Green. You start from humble beginnings. You busting your ass. You bust your ass when you start from humble beginnings because you don't have nothing. Did you know that you're going to perform your best when your back is against the wall? When your back against the wall, that's when you perform the best. You're trying to work your way up out that slump. You starting in your car. You see somebody pull up in the terminal with a brand new 2024 T250 high roof extending limb. And you looking at it. Because that's what you want. That's your next step. You and your Hyundai Sonata, your Toyota Camry, and you loading the backseat of your car with stock X boxes and Zara boxes and they added a few Office Depot packages to you and a few Granger packages. Now your back seat is full, your floor is full, you opening your trunk, you stuffing your trunk, and you got packages on the front seat of your car down to your floor. You get money, though. They still paying you. But you know that if you get that Ford T250, high roof extended limb, you just looking at the capacity, you can fill that up. Man, I can get double the amount of pieces that I'm getting triple the amount of pieces. That's going to equate to this much dollars. Now, you looking at him pull up and his T250, and, and you know what you're going to do? You're going to try to stuff a few more packages in that Toyota Camry. I've been there. You're going to get out there and you're going to get to work. You're back against the wall. You're trying to get to the next level. I'm going to tell you something my OG told me, and this is how it kind of equates to business. I remember when I was growing up, when I first turned 18, even though she wouldn't have been able to do it, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, single mother, two kids. I wanted a car. She couldn't buy me a car. She said, even if I was in a position to buy you a car, I wouldn't do it for you. If you get everything at a young age, you ain't going to have shit to look forward to as you get older. Certain things you got to work for. You appreciate them more. You start from humble beginnings in your personal vehicle. You already got a plan. I want to scale to a cargo van. Then I want to scale to a box truck. Once you get to a box truck, if you want to go sky's the limit, you can go to a semi truck. You got something to look forward to. So that's what you're working towards. Back is against the wall. You working hard because you trying to get up out that, that Camry. You tired of putting miles on the Camry. You understand that this Camry is not only a vehicle that I'm using for work, but this is also my personal vehicle. I'm putting a lot of miles on this vehicle. I got to hurry up and get out of this thing because this is, I, I need this vehicle. If this vehicle breaks down, not only do I not have a vehicle, I also can't make no money. You working towards something. There's nothing wrong with starting from humble beginnings. So if I was starting right now in this business, obviously I wouldn't start from that at this point in my life. But let's say I wasn't at this point in my life, but I still had the knowledge that I have and I didn't have no money. I would start with what I have. Whatever personal vehicle I was driving, that's how I would start. If I had the capital to start from a cargo van business, from a cargo van, I would personally start from a cargo van and I would learn at a cheaper cost of the learning curve and I would work my way up. Another reason I would start probably with a cargo van if I didn't have the resources or weren't able to get the resources and just, you know, listening to me saying, you know what, this is maybe it too advanced. Maybe I should start with some, something less advanced and then work my way from there, there's a lot of opportunities with the cargo van. Yes, the cargo van is going to pay you less per job, per stop than a box truck. But the restrictions that are 
you know, that you have to adhere to with running a box truck. A lot of those restrictions you don't have to adhere to with a cargo van locally. If you're running local, you can run. You can do a dedicated route in the morning. You can do a uh, uh, moonlight on, on gig apps in the late afternoon through the evening. Opportunities are endless. So the point, and I hope I'm able to get through people that you don't have to start necessarily with a box truck. A lot of people just don't understand it now. Another thing is, and I've said this before, but as you guys can see, we constantly get new people. So I pardon me to the subscribers who have been here for a while. If you hear me repeat myself, but I have to repeat certain things because new people are steady coming in. The rates, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience of being in the space for a while. The rates that you see today are similar if not the same to the rates from years ago when I was first starting. Everything else has went up. So it's harder. You have to keep that in mind as well. It's not doom and gloom, it's honesty. You take that information, you put it in your back pocket so that when you start your business, you have all this stuff to consider. Don't come to me talking about you sign a deal with a subprime or an equipment loan because I'm going to say, look, I, 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 I talked about that already. You're going to pay three, two times for that truck. This is why you don't have any money. You're running, you're running, you're running. And all your money is getting wiped away on your fixed costs because you're paying a high, high note. Understand what it costs you to live. Listen, if you know you got a wife and two kids and you know your living expenses is $6,000 a month because your kids is growing like weeds, then that's what you need to be able to pay yourself. You need to know this before you go invest into the business. A lot of people don't think that. You rob from the sustainability of business, your business is going to fail. And that's why so many people businesses fail because after they fixed and they 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 fixed and they uh 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 god damn it, they fixed and they variable expenses, they think that the rest of the money is theirs. No, it's not. Where my button at? Y'all ain't you hitting well. The business gotta get paid, man. The business gotta get paid before you do. And if it ain't enough to pay you, then so, oh, well, that's that's the nature of being a business owner. There's going to be plenty of times, especially at the beginning where you don't get paid. You're the last person to get paid. So guess what? If you got a wife and two kids at the crib and you need income coming in consistently, not only do you not to reconsider the box truck business, you may need to be a, to reconsider any business because you may not be in the space at that particular time to take that risk. We've seen people on testimony. We saw one incident on, the, on maybe one or two testimonials where we saw that happen. You may not be able to take the risk. This is why you have an, an issue because you take it from the business to take care of home. No, you take care of the business, take care of the business, then you take care of home. If there's nothing to take care of home, then that means you need to work harder so you can generate more revenue for your business. Or you need to decrease your living. That's where the sacrifice comes in at. Delayed gratification. Decreasing my living. If your living right now is $5,000, $6,000 a month and you're not able to pay that because your business isn't generating enough so that the business can sustain and it can pay you a salary enough to pay yourself $6,000 a month, that means you need to start looking at your bills and see where you can start cutting at. Hey, we got to get rid of this cable. We only going to need internet. Now, and we ain't going to be able to get 300 MBP. We, ain't, we can't get the enterprise packet. We got to get the, the minimum, 100 megabits per second. Well, you know what? We're not going to be able to stream from the iPad, the Roku, 
the, that, the, the, I, the, no, we're going to have to cut it down to one stream device per time. So if, if man man in his room doing his homework on, on the computer, that means you can't stream Netflix. We don't got it. We don't got enough megabits per second. I had to cut it off. We got the box truck business. We ain't making enough money. We can't get those megabits per second. Now we got a matter of fact, we can need to cut Netflix. That little twenty dollars a month, we need to keep. We we can't we can't afford that. Cut Netflix. Cut Hulu. What's the what's the one that everybody watched? The black one with with Blueface and Krishan. What's that one called? What's that? What's the black uh network called? Uh uh um. What's the black network called? Somebody help me out with with Krishan and them. We gotta cut it. It's got to go. You can't watch Blue Freight's Pimp Krishan. You got to cut that. It's a wrap. It's over with. Girls night. Girls night. Saturday night. No, you can't go. Nope. Nope. You can't go. You can't go because uh, 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 Shay Shay, she going to want to get a section. And then all four of y'all going to have to ante up because the section going to be 800. So that means I'm going to have to give you 200. And that two hundred, we we can't we can't afford that. So you can't go. I don't want you there anyway. Cause I heard man man, your baby daddy was there, and I heard he be going to that spot. And you know you got a curfew, and you didn't come in at two o'clock the last time you came in at four. So I don't know if you did a quickie with man man out in the parking lot. You can't go. That two hundred dollars, no, we can't. You can't go. So you need to practice delayed gratification. You got to start making cuts. You got to start making sacrifices. Just because your living was at here when you was working and you decided to want to get away from the rat race and you thought that when you came into the box truck business, it was going to meet you at the same place your work was making and or go above, you were sadly mistaken. Your job is, 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 is matching you for your health care. You got two kids. You start your own business, so guess who got to pay health care? You paying that out of pocket now, pimp. You forgot about that, didn't you? Yeah, they didn't tell you that, did they? Look, Junior down here, he ain't, he can't see. You got to take Junior. Junior got to get some glasses. No, you ain't got the, you, you left the rat race, pimp. The job ain't, the job ain't taking care of that. No, you need to go on insurance or whatever one of them insurance was you need to get you a policy and guess what they may not cover man man little man man little junior glasses all the way because he can't see his 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 lenses is that thick so they said well you knew you ain't met your deductible yet you just signed up you ain't met your deductible yet so guess what we're gonna pay for 50 percent so now you gotta buy the frames and you gotta pay 50 percent Man, man can't see. He got a stigmatism. They didn't tell you that, did they? So these are all expenses that now you're responsible for. You want me to tell you how much it costs me for insurance every month? All this is things that you got to pay for. And guess what? If the business ain't generating enough money, guess what? You got to make more money. You can't take from the business to, to buy man-man glasses. No, Mark, you cruel. No, I'm not cruel. It's God first, then business, then everything else. No, Mark, you got to put family before business. How can you put family over business? If you put family over business, when you gonna have, when you going to make the money? You need to make the money so that you can take care of family. How many testimonies do we see? Well, man, Mark, once I paid all this, you know I got to take care of home. Well, that's why the business fell in. Because you focused on home instead of focusing on, the, focusing on the business so that the business can pay you so that you can take care of home. I got to keep reiterating this. I apologize if you heard, heard part of this before because, you know, we got new people in there. Ivan, I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening, Ivan.
I hope you're listening. Gonna learn you something today. If you ain't learned before, you gonna learn you something today. You gonna learn today. You gonna learn today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's real out here in the field. You are responsible for you now. It's a lot of responsibilities being a business owner. See, they didn't tell you that, did they? And we talking about you just being responsible for you. And here go the other thing. People, oh, I want to scale up the fire truck. You can't even take care of you. Look how many people we've seen lose. How you going to scale up when you're making the wrong decisions or you're not thinking on a broad level? That's why we talking about this. I'm not, I hope you didn't think I was finna just give you a blueprint on being successful in the box show if you wanted to start a box show business in 2024. I'm telling you what you need to think about and what you need to prepare before you even start to sit down and write your business plan. I'm telling you from an experienced business owner the things that you are going to uh, uh, encounter being a business owner that a lot of people on the internet aren't talking about. Aren't talking about. So that you can make a well-informed decision. These decisions are critical they're vital to your success if i were to get into the space right now with everything that i've acquired over the years i would have to practice delay gratification because there's no way i would be able to start a cargo van business right now and i know my living expenses is ten eleven thousand dollars a month and it's just me some a lot of this shit gotta go i pay three hundred dollars a month for cable i don't even watch the shit that's gotta go netflix gotta go hulu i don't watch that shit that shit gotta go and I'm telling you what I would have to do. All this streaming shit, it's got to go because it costs too much. I would not be able to help you no more. I'm sorry. I can't help you. I got to get rid of this shit. All the subscriptions to run this shit, these lights, all these screens, these cameras, this, this Mac studio. I'm going to have to sell this shit. It's got to go. I can't afford to do it no more. No more eating out. I looked at my damn DoorDash or Uber Eats bill. At the end of the year, they got the statement and tell you how much money you saved this year. I saved $400. So I saved $400. So that means 50% off of damn fees and not paying the deliveries. I saved $400. So if I save $400, goddamn, how much I spend? No more eating out. No more Uber Eats. No more Portillo's on cheat days. No more dinner dates to Gibson's and... And, and 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 Morton's and 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 State Forty Eight, no Eddie V's, none of that shit. That shit gotta go. Matter of fact, no more dating. Period, because I won't be able to afford to date. I can't afford to date if I'm starting a cargo van business right now. I gotta cut that shit out. I can't afford it. Delayed gratification. I have to cut back on my living because I understand based on the research or me knowing already that shit for me to make a certain amount of money and still be able to live at the current lifestyle. You see that I'm going to be working 24 hours a day or I'm going to have to decrease because I know that I, I'm going to have to maintain the business. So that means the business has got to get paid. And I'm going to have to decrease my living because I know I'm not going to be able to pay myself enough in that business right uh in order to take care of my current living situation this is what a lot of people don't think about
So with all this being said, I want people to go into 2024, opening their mind from a business perspective. Don't, you know, make decisions based on emotions and excitement. Matter of fact, don't be excited. Don't be excited. You don't, you ain't earned, you ain't earned the right to be excited. You excited and you ain't did shit yet. That's how you make mistakes. You need to be conscious of every single decision you make. Because every single decision you make starting your business is crucial to if you're going to succeed or you're going to fail. I'll take three questions and I think I'm going to retire for the evening. Uh, I see Axel is talking to. Uh, well, Axel is trolling somebody. I don't know what's going on. All right, so come on, Natasha. You better come with your question. The first three questions that I get OTR Ray, Zeus, that's what it is. Thank you. Mark, you got a pimple. Go pop it. Yeah, it's right here. So what? Uh,. Respect man, man. <laughs> hey, I use man, man as the shorty. I use man, man as the baby daddy. I just use man, 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 the baby daddy, man, man, the little junior. I, man, 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 man. Everybody else in the black community that create content, they use um, what was Kevin, um, uh, Kevin Samuels, little Pookie and Ray Ray. I know Kirk used Pookie Ray. I can't use the same thing, so I had to create my own man, man. It's a lot of man mans in the hood. Man man. Man man. Uh, we gonna take three questions. Y'all still talking to Ivan? Is this, did y'all get Ivan together in the chat, man? Is Ivan straight now? Ivan, you good now, man? Is you straight? Uh, uh, let me see. 5K Matt, didn't you have a question for me the other day? And I told you you had to wait. I feel you on the excited part, Mark, because I was showing it off and so happy with myself and for what I didn't do shit but fail my first two. But see, that's why you got to watch Mark the Mentor. I don't even know you when I, I told you what you did. How I, how I know what you did and I don't even know you. See, see, I like you, Ivan. See, you done, you done came in. We got you together. But now you are part of the MGM gang. So we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you. And, and, and what we want to do is we want to help you if you, well, I don't know, you said you're in a semi or you looking to do a semi. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this based off your our in, initial introduction you can be successful in the box truck business you can be successful in any business it's just you have to one understand what you're investing in you got to understand what you're investing in all right um two you have to you know do your due diligence a lot of people don't do their due diligence they don't have a plan three you came in with the whole guru thing. I'm not a guru, all right? So I, 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 I understand because, you you know, people see the channel, it goes on the algorithm, and they think that everybody that creates content or has a certain amount of subscribers is a guru. That I am not, all right? I'm a person who's actually done it, done it for many years, and uh, I've built up a community uh, of people based on the information that I give and people take that information, they go out in the real world and apply it, right? And they have success and then they come back and they spread the information and they validate the information, all right? I'm not one of those guys that started two years ago and I'm telling you information based off two years of experience. I've been doing this since 2010, all right? Been doing this since 2010 and that's how I'm able to get up here and speak candidly 
about it. So I'm not one of those guys. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, but, you know, you know, um, you just got to make better decisions, even with, you know, the people who you're going to consume information from. You just have to, you know, do a little bit of digging, do some due diligence on the people, do a little research, listen to what they say. Does it make sense? Go behind what they say. Get a second opinion. It's okay. Mark, I'm going to be honest. I'm here doing what I'm doing because of you and your videos. I really appreciate you. Like Felix Daly, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the content. I've been watching for a minute now. You stay driving jewels and leading the wheel and in the right direction. Appreciate you. Mark, I'm out here in Sacramento, California. Any thoughts on where I should begin? I have a pickup truck and Ford excursion. I would definitely start with that pickup truck. See if it's a one rail out there. They got that Lowe's account. I believe that lets you take your pickup truck. You can go to Home Depot and rent an open, a open trailer, a six by 12 open trailer for like $19.99 a day. And I would see if I can get lumber, uh, bags of cement, uh, uh, whatever, whatever you can put in that trailer. Uh, if one rail doesn't work for you, I would go to T-Force. Now, the T-Force, you're not going to be able to use that pickup truck. Well, you can, but you will only be able to put items in the back seat. So I don't know if you got a full cab or a half cab, you know what I'm saying? So for that, I would utilize the excursion. Now, with the excursion, I know you got plenty of space, all right? Um, and I would do e-commerce deliveries. They probably mix a little uh, Office Depot in there, a little Granger. I would do that. Uh, I would also supplement it with... Um, gig stuff in the evening you're not held to any restrictions like a box truck so you can work as long as you want all right the grind don't stop when you're hungry and your back is against the wall and you got a plan to move up you're gonna work shout out to natasha with the super chat we gotta drop a coin <sighs> natasha is a long time subscriber Mark, I wanted to go out to a couple warehouses to get some work. I'm having trouble figuring out my pitch. Should I start asking how I can help them? What do I say without sounding like I've never done this before? The first thing you need to do is apply online. If you can't apply online, then you need to go there and ask what opportunities they have available. You need to let them know what equipment you have to fulfill whatever opportunities they might have available. And if they accept the equipment that you have, and then from there, if they do, you need to apply. It's not really necessarily a pitch. It's just, are you, do you have the equipment? Are you licensed? Do you have your authorization? And then you have your insurance. All right. When you're going out to these three PLs and you're doing local work, it's not really an interview. It's just meeting the requirements. As long as you meet the requirements, they're going to let you apply. And then it's up to you to do your due diligence to follow up with them so that you can get pulled in to start the onboarding process. Um, they may ask you some general questions. Well, they are going to ask you some general questions like, you know, how long, how many days are you available for work? Uh, they'll ask you some questions based on, you know, are you willing, can you be here at five in the morning? Are you willing to work until the route is complete? Stuff like that. Because they want to see if you, you got other obligations. If you're someone who got to pick up their kids by one, then that's not going to be for you because there's going to be days where your route is going to run over. Or there's some days you may have less stops. There's days you may have more stops. There may be a day where your route runs over because you may run into some obstacles. You may get stuck in traffic. Who knows? The questions are going to be like that. It's not going to be aptitude test questions, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's basically going in there, presenting the information that I just told you about and just being available and open. Most 3PL companies, they want open availability. They don't want to hear stuff about you got to pick your kids up or man, man, you got to go pick man, man up from daycare. They don't care about none of that stuff. It's a business. So as long as you can meet those obligations, then you straight. You straight. I appreciate that super chat, though. What kind of equipment do you got, Natasha? Did you finally go buy something?
What's your thoughts on getting into the cargo van game part time? If you're going to get in part time, I would just do gigs because I don't know what part time is for you because you could run a dedicated office supply run. Right. And obviously, if it's part time means you need to cut it off at a certain time. Right. But your route may not allow for you to cut it off at that certain time because your piece count is going to fluctuate. It's going to vary. Right. And depending on if they give you a dedicated route where you're servicing the same area every day, you know, that may not, you know, you know, you may not be able to meet what other other obligations you have uh, since you're inquiring about a part time. So if you're looking to do part time, then I would just keep my schedule open and I would just focus on gig stuff. So that way you have the flexibility to go and come as you please, because if you're doing something with a 3 p.m., your day is going to vary day to day. So. Uh, Neil, uh, if I were you, and this is me personally, I wouldn't run OTR in a van. That's just me personally. I would stay local. There's a lot of opportunities depending on what market you're in local. Your costs are going to be a lot lower. All right. If you're going to run OTR, I would want to run OTR with more capacity. All right. Um, you got to understand that, you know, it's a hierarchy. Right. So with that, that, that running OTR and that cargo van, you're going to be pretty much running expedited like Axel does. And that's very strenuous driving. And then you may get somewhere and then you may have to wait for a low back. There's a hierarchy. You know, that that cargo van stuff, that's and I'm not I'm not don't take this the wrong way when I talk. That's the bottom of uh, uh the bottom I don't know, the bottom of the bear. How do I want to say this? Bottom of the totem pole. Does that sound politically correct? Let's say they're they're at the bottom of the, the the hierarchy structure, right? So I don't want to say they get the scraps, but they get, let's say, overages, things that, you know, overages, things that were meant to maybe go on a semi, right? Maybe a pallet here, two pallets there. They don't want to pay a box truck. They don't want to pay a semi truck. They rather just pay a cargo van and run it expedited. Or it could be something that Let's say it's something that's on demand that needs to get from point A to point B in an expedited manner. All right. And you go there. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of competition over there. I'm pretty sure Axel will tell you this. He's also going to tell you, oh, it's not a good time right now. Uh, they run expedited. So expedited means expedite. They're driving. They're not they're not they don't meet the same restrictions. They don't have to meet the same restrictions as a box truck. All right. So. You know, that's something to think about. If you're in Sacramento, then I would go to T-Force. I would go to T-Force and see what they have to offer you. Natasha, Natasha, we had this conversation months ago. Natasha, please don't do this. I like you, Natasha. Natasha, you've been watching me for over a year. You didn't hear nothing I just said in this hour and 34 minutes what do we just talk about humble beginnings you trying to come in with no experience off rip and do something that and gain something that an experienced person would obtain natasha Natasha, humble beginnings. You saying seems like 
to who? Let me tell you where your issue is at, Natasha. Let me get you together real quick. I appreciate the super chat. I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the coins again. Please. But here's where I'm finna get you at. Cause you you here. Anytime I go live, you get the notification you hear. I appreciate that. But now here's my issue with you, because we've had this before. Natasha, you're not gonna just start this business and start at the top like you experience. That's not how this works. That's how no business works. You got to come in. You got to do the groundwork. You got to put in the lab work. You got to grassroot it. You got to bootstrap it just like every single body else. You're not special. You're not special. And who says they don't pay enough? See, here's the thing. You want to get a piece of equipment and you want to put someone in it. So now you're adding another layer of cost, which is lowering your profit margin. So it doesn't seem like a lot to you because you have no intentions on driving the truck. We had this conversation, Natasha. The profit margins in this industry are small. You don't want to go out and do the groundwork. You add another layer of cost. Of course, you're going to make less money. Who's going to give you an opportunity with no experience, Natasha? An advanced opportunity with no experience. You're talking about a direct shipper. If I was a direct shipper and you came to me and you had no experience, I'm not going to give you a contract. I'm not going to give you my goods. Why would I give an experienced person my goods? To deliver to my customer. That's my customer. This is I'm putting you in the mind of a shipper. I'm going to entrust a novice. To deliver my goods to my customer. And feel that. And feel comfortable. That this novice is going to be able to complete the task without any problems. No, I'm not going to do that. The same reason why brokers don't deal with new people. Because they have a customer. They're in a competitive industry too. They don't want to lose their customer to the next company or the next brokerage. They want to ensure that their customer is happy. You're new. You might not strap the load down. You might be one of those guys on the new who's not used to trucking. You forget to strap the load. You get it to the other, the destination is the turned over. Why would I trust a new person like that? We had this conversation the other day. No. Natasha, you got to start from humble beginnings just like everybody else. Just because you super chatted don't mean I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. You know we don't do that over here, Natasha. I appreciate the super chat, but I'm still not going to tell you what you want to hear. No, you got to get it from the mud just like everybody else. Humble beginnings. 3PLs pay fine. Take out that layer. Do the work yourself. Hauling and balling said, let her learn the hard way. Natasha, I'm upset with you. No, Mark, I did do the work. Remember I told you. Natasha, did you get a truck yet, Natasha? Did you get a truck? What did you get? A truck, a van, what? You you just talking. I don't even know what you got. Last we talked, you said you still you was going to get something. So did you get something? What did you get? Talk to me. Talk to me, Natasha. I'm going to give you all my attention. Cause you gave me a super chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my attention. I'm gonna make sure you straight before I end this live. Ivan said, I'm gonna get my DOT active and give it another shot. Mark kind of lit a fire in me. Hey man. You stupid. No, oh, wait, hold on. I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. You're not stupid. I hit two buttons at the same time. I didn't mean to hit the you stupid button. I meant to hit this button. I'm glad we lit a fire in here and you over here, man. And you know, I'm glad we got to Rex. 
But I'm glad you listened. I'm glad you didn't get upset. <clears throat> I'm glad you listened, young man, and 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 you're gonna give it a try again. And if you allow me, I'm gonna take you under my wing. And you can hold me to that young man. Whenever you go get everything active, you come back to me. I'm gonna take you under my wing and I'm gonna point you in the right direction and we're gonna make sure you succeed this time. I apologize for whoever led you down the wrong path before, but I'm gonna personally take you under my wing and we are going to lead you down a path to success and I am going to sponsor you myself pro bono, all right? So I am making that commitment to you today. I'm making that commitment to you today. I'm going to mentor you personally, all right? I mentor everybody for free when I do these live streams, but I'm going to mentor you personally pro bono. So whenever you're ready, young man, we're going to we're going to we're going to look out for you, all right? Whenever you're ready, you let me know. All right? Uh Don't pay Axel no mind, all right? Don't listen to Axel. Axel is going to, you know, get you in a world of trouble. Come on, uh, come on, uh uh uh, Pippi, I ain't got all day now. I still ain't watched the last episode of Power. I fell asleep on it last night. As soon as the credits went off, that's all I remember was the, the opening credits. It's 9.51. Come on. Natasha, come on, man. Hit the link. I'm just going to drop the link for you because you're typing too slow. Hit the link. I got five minutes. Hit the link, Natasha. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got the van, I got the contract, but the route took two days to finish, 12 hours each day. The stops were 10 minutes apart. What? Hold on. Oh. You in a van, you got a contract, but the route took two days? 12 hours each day, the stops were 10 minutes apart. The stops were 10 minutes apart, so I left, but they called me back and gave me more money. Hold on, hold on, hit the link. Hit the link, because that don't even sound right. It sounds right, but it tells me you're slow. You're too slow. You're moving too slow. You got a local route. It took you two days to finish, and the stops were only 10 minutes apart. Hit the link. Hit the link, Natasha. Come on now. Hit the link. Because you type too slow. It don't sound like she got hustled. She, no, this, I don't think this is expedite, Axel. I think this is local. Listen to what she's saying, Axel. The stops were 10 minutes apart. So if it was expedited, then you just looking at pallets. You got three pallets, two, three pallets, 10 minutes apart? No. This sounds like a, a a a final mile contract. It sounds like maybe an office supply. She probably had about a hundred pieces, and she just moved too slow. That's what it sounds like. Come on, Natasha, hit the link so I can get up out of here. Yeah, Axel, but she wouldn't. Have, Let, let, let me see what she got paid. Because, see, Natasha, she want to come in and be a millionaire. And that's just not how this works. That's just not how this works. It's not how this works. Nata and trust me, I, I, I've we've spoken. Natasha done came up before. Natasha got, she's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. She's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Come on, Natasha. Hit the link. You ain't got to show your face if you don't want to. I just got to speed this up. <sighs> How do I apply for T-Force? Is it online? Uh, Yeah, but not on their website. Their website, they don't update it. So look to see if they have an opportunity available on Indeed in your market. And if they don't have anything available on Indeed, don't fret. Just Google where your local terminal is or the closest terminal is. Drive there and go apply on perk. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna do you one, I'm gonna do you one better. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to do everybody one better. I'm going to do everybody one better. Give me one second. I'm going to do everybody one better. I'm going to put the recruiter. I'm going to put my contact in the chat. I normally don't do this, but I'm feeling good tonight, man. I'm feeling good, man. All right, here go Natasha. Natasha. Yeah. All right, what, what were you doing with this cargo van? Uh, so I signed on with a, um, a 3PL company called Sync Truck. Okay. So they was doing three dollars a three dollars a piece, three dollars each box, and they put me on a route in Montgomery County, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to take many boxes as I can. As I start mm -hmm. doing the route, the, the like the the stops were like six minutes apart, ten minutes apart. Uh, then I wasn't even in Montgomery County. They had me like everywhere. They had me everywhere. I don't know your area, but like, okay, it was like it was like like the route was like spread apart, real bad, real bad, Mark. Like you know, so the the route was taking me like two days to do. You know, I'm getting up six o'clock in the morning. I go to the, I go to the warehouse. I'm near to like ten o'clock, you know, breaking down the packages, rebuilding it up, taking it out, putting it on the van. I leave out. I'm not getting back to eleven o'clock. All right, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. What's the name of this company? It's called Sync Truck. S I N S I N. I think it's S Y. S Y. S Y C K, no S Y N K. Sync truck. Yeah. Sync truck. Uh, I believe it's a. Uh, um, oh, I see it. I think they're out of Last mile delivery. All right, so boom. All right, you got, you got, you, 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 you got. You apply with this company now. Say that again. They gave you how many boxes and what now? Cause I was typing something, so oh. I was listening, but I wasn't comprehending. So, so, so they said they were gonna give me Montgomery County, cause that's where they had the most volume. But I think the problem was is that they they didn't have the volume. So instead of giving people certain areas, they were more so spreading the boxes, like so splitting the boxes between their independent contractors. So instead of me being in one area, I was in like four areas. But you said the stops were 10 minutes apart. Right. So my stop would begin all the way out in Montgomery County and then would end up downtown Center City. Okay. So how far is Montgomery County from the 3PL? Uh, I think it's like a 40-minute ride. All right. So... Wait, Montgomery County is where the 3PL is, and Center City is where your route started, or reverse? No, no, Montgomery County, I mean, the, the 3PL is in, like, uh, North Philly. Okay, North Philly. That's where you yeah, picked the pieces is, up from. How many pieces were they right. giving you a day, on average? Um, I would try to take 100 boxes, like 100 boxes. So you were taking 100 boxes a day in your cargo van, right? Right. And they paying you how much per piece? They was paying me three dollars, three dollars a piece, at a hundred boxes. All right, so that's three hundred dollars. Now, where was your route? It was supposed to be in Montgomery County, but, but where was it at? It was it was everywhere. Listen, okay, so so every day your route changed, right? <laughs> It stayed in the same area, but it, it, it like spread across, you know, four or five different counties. So check this out. How many stops did you get? 
out of those hundred pieces, how many stops did that equate to per day on average? A hundred. So each stop was a hundred. Each stop was one piece. Exactly. Okay. So now, when you would get to your first stop, what was the average distance from your first stop to your last stop? Um. I think I calculated about maybe a hundred miles. Are you sure? Do I need to I pull up writing, a map? I was, I was I was writing down I was writing down the mileages at at, okay. the, at, at the each uh at the each route I was finishing like from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. So you after know. each stop, you was writing down the mileages. Uh, I started off that uh, off that way, but it was slowing me down. So when that's I what I was gonna say. And I took my notes. I would write down like I would try to get the mileage of the truck. So let me ask you this, because I don't know Philly, so that's why I'm asking you these questions. You don't know how many miles you were running on average a day. I, I don't think you were running 100 miles during a, in Philly, which is a large market, doing a office supply. So they, they had a contract with a Crake and Barrel. Okay, so you're running Crate and Barrel. All right. Let, let me let me pull up the map of Philly, man. Um, Philly. I can actually go, I can actually go get my um you, you ain't got hold on, let me see. Philly. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out, man. I'm gonna spend the time with you and I'm gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out. You getting three dollars a piece, which is exceptionally well in the cargo, man, Natasha. All right. Based on the information you're telling me, I can be honest with you without really, you know, digging too deep into it. I think you just moving too slow. I've stated this before with these cargo van routes, you get paid by the piece. And a hundred pieces, a hundred stops, that's really nothing. Because a UPS and a FedEx driver, they do more than that a day so it's doable and you said your route your stops were 10 minutes apart you, so that um, means that means you're running on a very dense route which is good no no i'm trying to tell you it wasn't this at all i even had um my sister and my cousin cover for me one day and that was two people on the truck and when he helped me one day I felt like I was moving a little bit faster, but even okay. when they went out, it, it still took them a day and a half. So, so as you sure it's a hundred miles, I don't think they would give you a hundred mile route with a hundred stops. Cause everything to you is a hundred, a hundred pieces, a hundred stops, a hundred miles. <laughs> like right, everything so, is a hundred. All, right, all, right. all right. So look, right. One day I was, uh, when I got home, I took down the, uh, miles. It was two, two fifty four twenty. Right. So as I, as I finished the route the next day, at the end of that day, I was at two fifty four ninety seven. All right. Let, let, let's look at this route. How Can far is it from that? how far is it from where you live to the facility? Um, like twenty minutes. H how many miles, Natasha? Come on, Natasha, man. You you getting you getting you getting <laughs> this this. <laughs> You still there? Natasha, you still there? Natasha. Natasha? <laughs> 
Did I hit her with the, the question? Natasha. Did she go look for the mouths or something? There you go. All right, Natasha. How many miles from the... Natasha. I can't hear you no more. Yo. Well, I do hear something in the background. I hear something beeping. Your lips moving, but I can't hear nothing you saying, but I hear your smoke detector in the back. Okay, she she hung up. All right, there you go. Hey, Amen. <laughs> All right, there she go. Natasha, how many miles from your, your, yeah, how many miles from your house to the uh facility? Nine nine point one miles. All right. And your route changed every day. Do you have one of your routes in front of you right now? Uh. Yeah, I I, I wrote down all the addresses. So how did I'm they give you your route every day? Was was it on an app? Did they give you paper? Like how would they give it to yeah, you? It was, it was on the yeah, it was on the app. See, I would have to see one of your routes to see like what you actually doing. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. It, huh? it took it took a long it took a long time, and and nobody wanted to do the route. You know, I came so, in one day, and the guy was like, you know, did you do? When they called me back, I remember I, I you was on live, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, you know, I left I left a company, and I feel like I shouldn't have left that way. So check this out. What what do I always say? What do I always say? You watch me all the time. What do I always say when you first come to a new company? What did you just say? You said you went there and you, for one, you knew. And you said nobody wanted to do the route. What do I always say when you on the new? Can somebody answer Natasha? Because she, she's here all the time. That you want to get the bad route, right. All right. So right. that you on, you on the new. I, I accepted that. I accepted that. All but right. The reason, why, the reason why I had to, you know, walk away because it's taking me two days to do the route hey and check this out $200. check this out you on the new you never did this before you think you're gonna come in the gate and you're gonna be uh uh uh, uh um you're gonna run a seamless route you're gonna run the route efficiently hold on you think you're gonna run efficient on the new and you never did this before of course you're not why you think they not going to trip on you? Why you think they not tripping on you? Because you on the new. They know the route sucks. Yeah. They got to get it off the dock so that their customer is happy, which is Crate and Barrel, because if the stuff don't get moved on the dock, Crate and Barrel going to call them because now somebody got to call all those customers who's looking at an app, looking at an email, saying that they're going to get a package today at some time. So they're going to be looking on their front porch without it, but it's not going to be there because don't nobody want to do the route. So you watch me all the time. I say it all the time. You know you on the new. You're going to get the shittiest route. Right. So you knew that coming in. You just said nobody wanted it. So what you expect? So you know what you do? You put your head down. You get it done. You don't give up. Right. You don't quit because you decided to be a business owner. You decided to do this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I understand that. I understand that. Um, You know, so, you know, uh, they, they end up calling me back. And, um, you know, they did give me more money, but then they didn't pay me when they were supposed to pay me. What do you mean they didn't pay you when they were supposed to pay you? When was they supposed to pay you? They were supposed to pay me on a Friday. Okay. You know, um, I talked okay. to the guy. He kept, he kept promising me basically like tomorrow and all that. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess maybe... uh. Let me ask you this. You know, I could have probably, you... probably, you know, bit, was being, you know, emotional about it, but because he kept telling me the next day and it never came. And it was like, you so, know, dude, like, so, you know? So, so let me tell you this. Let me break this down. I think I know your issue with it. When did you start this contract? 
on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What days did you start? Uh, I started. I started in like I started on a Tuesday. Tuesday before on a Tuesday. Black Friday. Yeah. Okay, so you started on a Tuesday, and when did you expect to get paid? Uh, it was the next the next Friday. So not week. the not the first Friday, but the next Friday. Yeah. So you didn't expect nothing that first Friday, right? Right. All right. So did you go to talk to accounting? Because there may be a two week hold because that first week you may do, they may put the payment in for that the following Monday or the following Tuesday or the following Wednesday. So there may be a two week delay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I talked I talked to the guy and all that. He said that he put it through, and he kept saying it was going to be, you know, tomorrow and all that. But it never, it never came. So, okay, I I do feel like maybe I, you know, so this is where I you made the mistake. Decision, but, you may, and, but I, and I know I'm over talking you, but I gotta keep the, keep this going. You talking to a dispatcher? You talking to a guy that's operations? You go to a facility every day, right? You need to go to the accounting office and you need to talk to them because they handle the payroll. That's where you're going to get to the nitty gritty because guess what? The operations guy probably didn't turn your paperwork in. So that's where you're going to get the answers from. If you go in there and they be like, Natasha, who? Did nobody submit payment for you? Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish because I you watch me all the time. I told a story about Eric Field at, at T-Force, which back then was Dynamics, how he didn't pay me. For two pay periods and but i still had to make payroll eight grand i paid out sixteen thousand dollars over two pay periods i had to go to a na lady named deviani patel who handled accounting and then i had to take it all the way to dallas texas to corporate so when you're talking to a person who doesn't handle payroll or settlements in your case because you're an owner operator you're at a facility with offices you need to go speak to the person who handles settlements I, I, I think he was the person was he the operations guy uh he was the guy that granted me you know the the extra money when i talked to him he said okay let me open up my laptop what's his title uh i'm not sure you got his business card? No, I got, I got, his, I had his phone number. And his no, email. You, you listen. You got to get his business card. You want the, you want the person in accounting's business card. You want the operations supervisor's business card. These are the contacts you want. You need to be cool. You need to know who the account person is on a first last name basis. You need to know this. When you're dealing with these three PLs. All right. Yeah. You quit too prematurely because you got frustrated. You got emotional. Yeah. Natasha. Natasha. <laughs> Listen. What I told you. You, wa you watch me all the time. Didn't I tell you this was is, is ugly out here in these streets? I told you how these people is at these three PLs. I talk about it all the time. Yeah. I don't know. I felt, I felt a little unappreciated, Mark. I ain't going to hold you. Underappreciated? I'm finna get off because they they finna be mad at me because I'm gonna have to treat you and they're gonna look at you as a woman and mark you don't have to do it. I don't look at you as a man, woman, nothing. I look at you as yeah, a business I, I, owner. So you don't get no sympathy when you come get up here in this circle. What you feel underappreciated, they ain't gotta appreciate you. Who is you? <laughs> what you talking about? Underappreciated. This business. You you just a you you are you Mark, remember when you was like, remember you was like, you know, getting good with the people and all of that, right? So, so, so that's what I did, right? They got a helper guy there, right? That you know, supposed to help you load your boxes and all that, right? 
So, you know, I slipped him a few dollars and told him when I come through, the, the, you know, get me out of there fast as you mean, fast as he can, right? So we all doing our work. We working together, you know, work getting done. And it seemed like they ain't like that. You're bribing the dock workers. You're bribing the dock workers for a dedicated route. This is not OTR. You got to go there tomorrow. No, no, no. He posted. He helps you. He helps you get your packages ready. I get what you're saying. Natasha, check this out. Check this out. This is what you're trying to do. You're trying to move through that like you one of them guys. Like you a boss. And I, and, and you, you know. know I, you know. No. You on the new. Yeah. Ain't no mark, nothing. You on the new. You ain't one of them guys yet. You ain't mobbing through that with some seniority like you one of them guys. You ain't did nothing yet. What did I just talk about? The excitement. You was not one of them guys, Natasha. You on the new. You at the bottom of the totem pole. You like a, a rookie cop. You going to get the donuts every morning. And you paying for them. You like a a, 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 a a new person in jail on the tier. That's a celly. You washing the draws. You on the new. You ain't finna go in there like you running some stuff. No, you got to do all the leg work so you can work yourself up out of that gym. I say it all the time, Natasha. And that's why I'm getting upset that you coming in here talking all this stuff. Because what you're doing is you, you tweaking tweet right now because you watch me all the time and I say everything that you're telling me right now, I tell you that's what you're going to be up against. And then you sit up here and you tell me you underappreciated. Don't nobody got to appreciate you. You know why they ain't got to appreciate under, you? know why they ain't got to appreciate you? Because they paying you. They ain't got to appreciate you. They ain't got to worry about the labor force and, you know, this, that, and the third. You ain't no employee. You replaceable underappreciate they ain't got to tell you thank you we appreciate you like you an employee and and and, and boost uh, 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 uh employee morale you're not an employee you they are you are me, you are. they they called me back how you called me back and then you know you know why they called you back you know why they called you back you know why they called you back because just like just like any other 3pl company they need people and they got you on the new and you're doing something that they need done because the people that have seniority in there have moved up. So they're not doing the route that don't nobody else want to do. They need it done. So they say, you know, we're going to show a little flex with her. She on the new. So we're going to let her do it at her own pace. As long as it's moving off the dock every day, that's fine. We can satisfy our client. Yeah, we know she's not going to finish, but every day it's leaving off the dock. And, that's another and then like and then we can place the blame on her. Shit roll down here, but we gonna work and we gonna train there and we gonna keep at it. This how it work, Natasha. Mark, they was lazy in that joint. What what that got to do with you? Cause it Cause I was getting listen, I was I was in there and I was I was hustling, you know, I was getting that shit done. And they ain't like they ain't like that. I was moving like that. They ain't, they. Ain't, it was weird. Like I'm, he, you get paid on trying to get the boxes out of here. So why you not trying to get the boxes out of here? Why you worried about what they doing keep, and what they get paid? You know what? This is perfect. I'm glad you up here saying all this stuff because this is exactly what the whole show was about. This is what my whole speech was about. You a business owner now. Figure it out. Figure it out. You wanted to be a business owner? Welcome to the world of business. Figure it out. You worried about what they get paid. They don't work for you. They work for them. They lazy, this, that, and the third. Welcome to the world of business. You got a problem? Now you got to solve it. You got emotional and you ran up out of there after two days. You no, sure you want to be a bit? Hold on. Let me finish. You sure weeks. you? Hold, no. no I don't, three weeks? Natasha, you sure you want to do this? You sure you want to do this? You heard some of the stories that I've 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 had to deal with. You got frustrated because they lazy. They don't work for you. That's a whole separate company. You a contractor because you out in the field and you can't get it done. What's going to happen when your truck break down? 
What's going to happen when, you know, a package gets stolen off your truck because you forgot to lock the door and you down on Kensington Avenue? You in Philly, right? You go down there on Kensington Avenue and some of them bucket boys down there on Kensington Avenue and some of them, them fitting all guys down there that's off the dope and they got the dope lean. They lean in like this and then they jump up when they see your truck pull up and you forget to lock the door and then you go inside the building to do the delivery and you come out and man man over there with the dope lean with the shit right here and the shit crusting his eye hopping off the back of the truck and he got about 30 boxes and you trying to figure out how man man carrying 30 boxes because man man a crackhead down on Kensington Avenue. So now you got to call the logistics company explained to them that man man and all his foe in them just took all these boxes off your truck because you didn't lock the door. That's a problem. What you going to do when you come across that situation and, and a plethora of other situations that you may have to deal with. You frustrated. You gave up because you're not completing your route. You on the new. It takes time to learn how to run efficiently. And effectively, you said the first day you sitting, there, you doing the stop, then you going back in the truck, writing stuff down. You don't got time for that when you a, a, a courier and you getting paid per piece. No, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. You need to learn how to optimize your route, get in and get out. No, nah, I'm not waiting for the signature. I don't give a goddamn. I got the scanner. I walk into a building. If you work here, I'm giving you the packet. Sign for this. I'm not looking for whoever this is walking on through this place. No, I'm going to the person at the front door who works here. You work here? Sign for this. It's on you. I'm gone. You walking all the way through. They tell you go to the fifth floor. Da 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 da. Nah, I'm not doing none of that. See, you got to learn all these little tricks of the trade. You think couriers to do this shit? They going through all these hallways and stuff no they the first person you see sign for this you got 90 now more stops to do yeah what you talking about what you talking about talking about they don't appreciate you what is you they, they don't gotta appreciate you who you think you is you replaceable. They can go find another you. What Beyonce say? To the left, to the left. You can, they go find another you. You know how many people out here got a van? You know how it's a it's a it's a it's a person who leaving FedEx or UPS right now that's doing 150 stops a day. That hundred stops, they can do that with their eyes closed and they sleep. They can come take that that route that you complaining about, and they can get there at five o'clock in the morning and they can be back by noon. I had a guy that could do it. his name was Hector. He came and worked for me. He left FedEx and came for work for me and ran an office depot route. And the first day he beat my best guy. My best guy would be back by two every day. Hector was back by 11. Why? Because he worked for FedEx, so he was used to doing twice as many stops. Yeah. I told you this shit wasn't going to be easy. When you was on the channel earlier this year, I, this is what it is. You got all the sauce. You can't get frustrated. Welcome to the world of business. Yeah. You quit. But wait, but listen though. Over but overall, Mark, like with with with, with all my expenses, if I caught a flat tire, I wouldn't have been able to pay for it. I wasn't I haven't even paid myself no no money. I basically just got the money from them, but like it wasn't Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait I couldn't wait, even wait, afford wait, wait, to wait, wait, put wait. dollars out the money in my business. What? Account. You That's saying if you got a flat tire, you wouldn't be able to fix it. That's what I'm saying. Two days, so you know I gotta pay. So my, I gotta pay my driver. I thought you was working. You told no, me you was working. Days, no, I'm saying the days that they covered for me, the days that they covered for me. Why did they cover for you? Because I, I still work at my job. What do we have? We had this discussion. If you can't listen, everything that I talked about tonight, you coming up here after that whole speech. And you coming up here just proving everything that I said. Not only are you no. proving everything that I said, hold on. You watch this channel consistently. So you jumping in, you 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 should have been 
off and running because everything that I've told you to do, you came and made the mistakes. Why would you start the business and you didn't have the working capital? Getting a tire fixed ain't shit. No, no, no. I'm saying no, no, no. I'm saying I have the working capital. I'm just saying that they wasn't paying me enough. If something did go wrong, I I didn't have enough money to to you know put. I should be able to put some something at least forty dollars into the business account. You know. Do you have working capital? You just said you had working capital. So do yeah. you have it or don't you have it? I do, but what for? How long? You know, it got to be worth. Wait, it gotta either be you have it, or, either you had it, or you didn't have it. Which one is it? Yeah, you just I said you it. didn't have it. So you know what I'm saying it wasn't paying me enough. I'm just saying that the route wasn't it wasn't worth the time. What do you mean it wasn't worth the time? You getting paid three hundred dollars a day, right? Right. So that you know but what that means two days, but not three hundred dollars a day. You getting paid per package. So right, I'm and they you said they give you a hundred packages. Right, so that's three hundred dollars within two days. Let, first of all, it don't take get... it don't take two days to do a hundred stops. I'm telling you, Mark. I'm telling you, it was. It took I'm you two you. days. You slow. No, you can't tell me. You can't tell me. You can't tell me because I know it's bullshit. It took you two days. You slow. All right, all right. So, so say ten minutes, okay. Say an average of six minutes, remark, right? So, how how many stops can you get done in an hour if it takes you six minutes each stop? Do the math. Ten. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so at that rate, you going? How long is it going to take you to do the route? Well, not six minutes. Take like seven minutes. So that means it's going to take you ten hours. That's not two days. That's the average. I'm telling you that most of the you most just, of those long packages was ten minutes apart. But let I'm me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Look, I'm finna. I'm finna. I'm finna tell you everything you're doing wrong. When you got to each stop, and be honest, did you have to go through the van to find the pieces? Um. Uh, well, sometimes not. Not like looking through them, but like I had them the way I stacked them. It was like in order. So where did you, where did you where did you optimize your route at? You optimize your route at the at the facility at the three PL. No, they do it. So they load your van and you load it. Oh, you said no. I load my van. I load my van. I okay. Like so that. how do you load your van? So I put the 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 one the the, the last stop. I put it at the back of the, the back of the van. So the the, the first stop would be piled up to the last stop in first first stop in last last stop in first first stop in last you you may taking too long now right. is your route do they optimize your route or do you optimize it saying like um like for is the direction is, is the route optimized meaning from the first stop to the last do they just give you a bunch of stops and then you have to put no, optimize the route so they, they put it in order from the first stop that's closest to the warehouse right well it was furthest coming back furthest coming back now does but that they, work they, better they, for they, does that now let me ask you this let me ask you this does that work better for you uh actually it did because i actually tried to do it the other way and i was downtown at the wrong hour so Doing it, doing right. it the way I just told you was actually better. All right, now, now let me ask you this: How long does it take for your van for you to load your van? It was taking like, like the least amount of time it took was like two hours. I knew you was going to say that. You need to cut that down to forty-five minutes to an hour. Yeah. Now you just shaved but off an hour there. No, I don't care what the guy say. I'm telling you from a person who's been to Office Depot, who ran nine trucks for Office Depot, and I actually cover some routes myself sometimes. You spend too much time at the facility loading the... Listen. That's, that's, you that's, spent, why, I was, that's why I'm frustrated. Let me explain I something to you. Guy, I, got, I had to All right. Well, you on the new. You ain't... He don't know you. 
what makes you think if if I've been there two three years and I got nine trucks in here and I'm him in that facility and you go to him and I go to him, who you think he gonna load first? Who package you think he gonna pull first? And I got nine trucks in here, or I got three trucks in here, or I got one van in here, but I've been here four or five years. I got a rapport with him. I didn't give him a Christmas gift card last Christmas. I ran into the man at the club. I had a section. I told him, no, nah, man, come over here. You can sit in my section and you can drink off my bottle. The point is, I already have a relationship. He don't know you. You on the new. These are things that you got to go through when you're starting a business and you're building relationships. You're going to have longer days at the beginning. Right. This is what you got to go through. You got to go through the tough times. What do I always talk about? It gets greater later. I say when you come into 3PL on the new all the time, you're going to get the worst route. Did I lie to you? Right, right. Uh, okay, so you know this because you watch Mark. I told you everything that you was going to be faced with. So why are you complaining about it? Because you knew about it before you got into the situation. Right. I, I, I understood that. Yeah. I, I chalked that up. I understood all, right. all of it. All right, so what you complaining for? Why you complaining? complaining. Yes, I'm you are. I'm just saying that they wasn't like that, Mark. I'm telling you, they they was in their cabin talking about how you know, oh, you see all these drivers, all these drivers. First of all, the helper he had the helper out out with a pesky truck that he had to rent. So you don't got no drivers like that, you know. But 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 don't treat me that way, cause cause you need me. I, I don't want to say it because I, I don't I don't I don't want to get canceled. You I it's right. something I want to say, but I ain't gonna say it because I don't want to get canceled. Yeah, I don't want to get canceled. So the people in the live, y'all know what I want to say, but I ain't gonna say it. Just use your imagination. But hey, <laughs> you want to be a business owner. It, it, listen, it, it listen, uh, listen, it listen. It's tough, ain't it? It's, it's all day, every day. It's tough, ain't it? Yes, it is tough. Yeah. They they lied to you on Instagram, didn't they? They they told you a story. Then you came over to Mark, and Mark told you it was real, but you got out there and saw, man, Mark ain't lying. Everything you saying right now is shit that I've been telling you. So I don't no. get why you upset. No, I'm not upset. I yeah, you are. You are, upset. you are upset. You quit. You a quitter. Oh, you no, in the no. no, you in the circle. You in the circle. You in the quitter. You is a quitter because you quit and they called you back. They called you back so you could do that same route that don't nobody else want. And you know what you're gonna do? I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do. Or I'm gonna ban you from this channel. Cause you know it don't make me no never mind. But we don't deal with quitters. You're gonna go in there. You still got the account? You back in there? You back in there? They ain't what? Paid, so. What you mean they ain't paid you? When did how, how long you been running this account? Um, like I've been I think it's been a few weeks, like a week and a half. Did you go talk to people yeah. in the county? They finally paid me to follow and check. You just said they didn't pay you. Come on, Natasha. No, Which one is starting it? Starting off, they didn't. They starting off. He, he wasn't paying me. He kept saying, "Oh." tomorrow and then i called the you just said right? they did i just said are you still there you said no nah, because they ain't paid me so then i said how long you been there you said well they did pay me so come on natasha you you talking to me let's get it no, together at now time, at the time that i walked at the time that i, I decided to just walk away you know they end up paying me the, the their following week <laughs> so you got paid right yeah 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 i did yeah. Okay, so why aren't you there still? Because the route wasn't 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 good for the business. Okay, so overall, what, I feel like the all right, so so good. where you gonna find a route that's good for the business at on the new? Because any company you walk into, you're gonna get the shit end of the stick because you on the new. You come into if I'm running the three PL, I don't know you. I'm giving you, you think I'm going to take care of the guys that's been here, that's been showing me loyalty. So I reward them with a better route. When one person fall off, okay, it's a better route available. You can move up to this route. And then we'll put the person on the new 
you going to get the shitty route because you on the new. You got to prove yourself until somebody else come in on the new and then somebody that's been here fall off and then it works its way up with seniority. So anywhere you go, you're going to get the shit into the stick. Why would a 3PL reward you with a good, dense, high-paying route? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Mark. I, you know, all the, all, I think all they routes was like that. Because they, one day they asked me to do P1 for them, right? They asked me to do a whole a whole nother route, a whole mm. different county, right? And mm. it was the same thing. They didn't really have a volume. And I talked you out of a box truck with a cargo van to get a cargo van, didn't I? Yeah. I did the right thing, didn't I? Yeah. Because you wouldn't have, a box truck, you would be crying the blues. You see this, Ivan? You see see how we do things? You see how we hold the people accountable over here, Ivan? This is what we do over here. She wanted to get a box truck. I told her back then she couldn't get no box truck. Who saw that live stream? Y'all said, Mark, you was wrong. You too hard on her, Mark. Mark, you too hard on her. Now y'all see why. Now you see why. It wasn't the fact that I wasn't right. I was definitely right. It just wasn't right now. Now it's right now. And now y'all see why. If 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 I would have let her win and got that box truck, she would be up Shit's Creek right now. Six, seven months later. That's why she in here dropping super chats because she said, Mark, save my ass. You frustrated from running small parcels in a car in a cargo van. What you think you would have did in a box truck? You wouldn't have made it. Yeah. You crying and complaining over some little bitty packages of the size like this. Talking about more the, 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 the guy. Man, nobody want to hear that. Well, they weren't helping me. They ain't got to help you. You on the new. I tell you this all the time. You on the new. So, you know, this is what you need to do. You quit, right? You quit, right? You ain't doing it no more, right? No, I ain't. I ain't not, not that route. So, where the truck, where the van at now? The van, the van outside. I'm getting some brakes and rotors. And it's stuff parked. Like so, the van ain't making no money right, right now, huh? Oh, uh, well, I, um, I, um, hmm. I signed up for the roadie. This is what you need to do. Don't go back to them because they probably don't want you back no way. You done quit on them twice already. Go to T-Force. And here's what I'm thinking. You, let, no, ah, ah. You kept, ah. I don't got to hear you out because you said enough. You kept your job. You added another layer of expense. What money do you expect to see, Natasha? You have to hire a driver. You have to pay the driver. We went through all this. You still went out and did it. Though you didn't listen. You didn't buy the box truck because y'all see now she would have been the box truck. She really been a bit of shit's creek. But but what you have to understand is you're keeping your job. You have to hire a driver, which means you have to pay them, which means your profit margin is going to be decreased. So either you accept. Hold on. Either you accept the minimal, the minimal profit margin or or you 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 sell the van and 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 focus on your job. This is the business. This is what it entails. We went through all this. You've been watching for over a year. Everything I told you not to do. You did one thing that I told you not to do, and then everything I told you you would be faced against, you 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 knew this, you went up against it, and you and you folded. No, it wasn't that. It was just that I felt like you know, and I and I thought about it. You know, I I thought about it because it was like you know I'm making less money than I make. Like, come on now, like I get paid more than this. You know how many routes I've ran where I paid the driver more than what the company made? And that's and that's and that's and that's why we're having this conversation about that route anyway, because I ain't want to talk about that anyway. But that, that's you know, I understood, I understood that. I understood that. I understood that, you know, it's a business and that, you know, I'm not even gonna be able to, you know, get paid, you know. 
I understand that. But far as T Force, um, no, it was Capstone. It wasn't T Force. It was Capstone. Uh, my van is yellow. My van not white. So I'm having trouble. We had this conversation too. Everything that and. What did I tell you? What did I say on the last year? I said, go get a white van, a white truck. What did I say? I said, these companies don't accept these colorful co trucks. All white. You watch me day in and day out and you go do the opposite. Why? Why, Natasha? How many times have I said, don't go get these colorful trucks white because these companies want all white? But you go get yellow. So you know what you got to go do now? I, I got to fix what? I got to fix for it. You want to know the fix? You got $4,000? You got a, what kind of van you got? That's the problem. How, what kind of van you got? I got a freight line of 2500 Go get it wrapped gonna be about four grand maybe three depending on where you go but i would want a good job i wouldn't want to peel or bubble up so i would want a good job a good vinyl wrap 3m that's that's an easy fix right there but this is part of business you didn't listen to mark so now you got to pay the cost so now this is where your working capital comes in at so now to make yourself you know, uh, 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 more attractive to a multitude of 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 three PL companies. You have to do what Mark told you to do in the first place. Get a white piece of equipment. Can I, can I ask you something right fast? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, I got a call back from uh, another company, but they want uh commercial plates. They okay. Said I have to commercial plates mm -hmm. and uh i'm having trouble i'm having trouble getting commercial plates what kind of plates you got on the uh they uh truck plates what company is this that want commercial plates uh i think it's i think it's called ever ready what what do they do um she wouldn't tell me what kind of what kind of materials they they um they 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 what kind of material what kind of um damn what's the terminology I'm looking for? Do me she a wouldn't favor. tell me exactly what I'd be shipping, but she did Basically. say that I'd be shipping that I got I'm gonna have certain stops between states between no. uh Pennsylvania. No, no. And you're not you're not going OTR. You're not going OTR. No, that ain't for you. No, no, no. It's not OTR. It's just in in Jersey from Jersey to New York. You in Philly. Right. You just told me you don't have the money to get your tire fixed. So what's going to happen if something happened while the van up in New Jersey? You got the money to get it towed back to Philly? No, I said no. What I said was they wasn't paying me enough if anything went wrong, like a tire blown out. That's not on them. That's on you as the business owner. It's your responsibility to have working capital for unseen, unforeseen incidences. Right. I understand that. But... The money is the money. They wasn't paying enough. Three hundred dollars for a van route on a dedicated route is good money. That's that's the you base that I. Three hundred dollars a day. You saying three hundred dollars every two days? What do I always say? No, it's for you because you can't complete your route. That's on you. You can't complete your route. You telling me a hundred stops like I'm supposed to feel sad for you or something? When FedEx and them out here doing hundred and eighty stops a day, like it can't be done. That's easily done. I've done it. What are you talking about? Like I'm supposed to feel sad for you. I don't want you to feel sad for me. I'm not going to. I'm saying that it was a fucked up route. Like, no, it wasn't. Yeah, you on the new. I say this all. Like, we going to keep repeating the same shit that I say every single time I go live. When you started with a 3PL, you're going to get the messed up route because you on the new. You're going to get the bottom of the totem pole route. Like, well, who you think you is? You thug that route out, you do it, you you master it, you become a monster, and you master it. You go in there with that animal ambition, and you take what you want. 
you outwork everybody else in there until you take their route. What do I tell you? I say this all the time. I'm taking everything in there. If it's a route that I saw I wanted, I'm going to take it. You fool. You lucky I ain't I ain't in Philly and I was still active because I eat your food. I would take your food off your plate and I would eat it in your face. You worried about what the doc got doing, they in there doing this. What they got to do with you? You know what I would do? Let me tell you what I would do. And this ain't no cow. I ain't bullshitting you neither. I got to get up out of there. I got to get up out of there because I'm not trying to be out here all day delivering these stops. So guess what I'm finna do? I'm finna start roaming around that warehouse. I'm gonna learn that warehouse. I'm gonna learn how to pull this shit on my own until they say, man, what you doing? Listen, I gotta get up out of here, man. I got other shit to do. What y'all gonna do? What y'all gonna do? I'm gonna act like I'm running a business in there. I'm not finna be waiting around. I'm not finna be pussy fitting. I'm not finna be passive. I'm finna be leaning on shit because I gotta get up out of there. I'm not trying to be out all day doing this shit. What are you talking about? That's, 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 that's you ain't telling me nothing. That's no, you quit. You ain't even went about it. Let me explain something to you. You ain't go about it like that. Second of all, you got to understand. I'm going to keep it real thousand with you. You a woman. So what do I always talk about women? You understand you coming into a male dominated industry. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you because me leaning on somebody and you leaning on somebody is two different types of lean. You going to go in there with a little bit timid. I'm going to go in there like, man, I don't give a damn. What y'all want to do? I could take this van and go somewhere else because I'm going to have that attitude. Listen, y'all want the van? Y'all want me to go out and get this done? All right, either y'all going to load this van up or I'm going to go load this van up or somebody going to load this van up. But if this van don't get loaded up, I'm going to go on this phone. I'm going to go on Go Share. I'm going to go on Go Daddy. I'm going to go on Roadie. I'm going to go on Carry. I'm going to go on somebody. This van going to make some money. But I'll tell you one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to sit up here while you pussyfoot around. You talk about which broad you slept with last night. You talk about the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. I don't want to hear none of that shit. I'm a Bears fan. I'm from the crib. This van need to get loaded or this van finna get gone. What y'all finna do? Now, they can load the van or they can laugh. But either way, it's going to get done or it's going to get gone. You quit without leaning. You're going to deal with that. You a woman. You on the new. These are all obstacles that you're going to be faced with. And these are facts. You running off emotion. Because you a woman. Man, Mark, I got frustrated and I just quit. No, what you getting emotional for? This trucking. You don't just get emotional in truck and in trucking. You get shrewd. Now you shaking your head. You don't want about you a freight line of 2500 There's somebody out there right now in this chat that wish they had your piece of equipment. You got a 2500 freight liner. What year is it? I bet you it's a beautiful too. I bet you it's a, it's a, a pretty, ain't it? What year is it? It's, it's, it's a 14. What year is it? It's a 14? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's sitting too. Ain't making no money because you got frustrated because they gave you 100 pieces and 100 stops and you talking about it took you two days. That should have been six hundred dollars. You should have knocked that out. Even if it took you ten hours, you should have knocked it out. And then the next day, you should have tried to get your route done in nine hours. And then the day after that, you should try to get. No, that's not what you're saying because you quit. I, 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 my first, listen, my first stop was like six seventeen. I'm 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 scanning the package at six o'clock. Not getting into like eleven thirty. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. It took you from six seventeen to eleven thirty to do one stop. No, I'm talking to start the route. Like, and I still wasn't done. Wait, 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 wait. What time did you get to the facility? So, no, what I started doing was I started, you know, what I do is I, I go get what the time packages. Did, I do the what route. time did you get to the facility? I don't, I don't want to hear all that. What time did you get to the facility? I get there at 6 o'clock. What time do you leave the facility? Um, at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. That's too late. It shouldn't That's take what I was saying. No, no, no. One hour. It shouldn't take you four hours to put a hundred packages on a van.
You the only one in there. I bet you you the last, you the only one in there. When you yeah, leave, you the only vehicle in there. Because they, no, they ain't had nobody else in there. No, because everybody else done loaded they, they vans and gone. So you still in there lo loading and they ain't saying shit to you. They, they ain't coming to help you either. Did they come and help you? That's what I'm saying. I don't think that they liked it, the fact that they was helping me. It wasn't, it wasn't. You know why? People. You know why? You know why? Hold on. You know why? You know why? Because it's not their job to help you. It was his job to help me. No, it's not. When you go to a 3PL, the person who works in the in the in the in the three PL warehouse that's riding around on either on a, a forklift or on a wave, they bring the packages to you. If they tell you to load into tw dock twenty two, whatever your route is, they supposed to line your pieces up, your pallets up right there, and it's for you to load your vehicle. They was helping you because they need to get you up out of there because you've been there too long. A hundred packages. Listen, I've loaded. I to, listen, I had to break the. Listen, I had to undo the packages, lay them out scan them write the number on them and then put so? them back up on the pilot and then take so? it out to the van so that's the job and yeah that's cool right that's cool you know that that's all right i'm just saying that it was taking you know time is money you know y'all supposed to have the shit ready right no you know it's there for you it's your job you the owner operator the shit was right yeah. there you loaded your van did you back it into the did you back it in is it a facility where you pull the, the van all the way in uh no, you pull it to the to the to the gate. To the gate, so you run it in and out. No, no, you supposed to uh when when you finally scan all your packages and number them, uh you pull the pilot out to the uh outside basically. All right, so listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with this and pardon everything you telling me. So. That's just part. That's just that's what this entails. So yeah. all that you telling me, like, man, I had to do this. This is the job. We went through this a zillion times on this channel. So you know what you was up against. But now that you're out physically doing it, you like, man, this is a lot of hard work. Which goes back to what we always talk about. Yes, yeah, see, it is what it is. You thought when I was telling you this shit was hard that I was just capping. It was doom and gloom. Now you see, it's not doom and gloom. It's reality. All right, so boom, this is what I need you to do. You done blew it with them. You need to go to another company, and this time when you go in, you're going to start at the bottom because they're not going to give you a good route because you're new. They don't know you. Why would they give you a good route? When you get the, the route at the bottom, you're going to have to thug it out. You're going to have to work it. You're going to have to master it. You're going to have to show them, look, I'm here. You gave me the worst route, and I conquered it. Matter of fact, I want that route. Yeah, I want his route. And that's what you should make on your goal. What route you want, you put that on your goal list. And that's what you work towards. It's com it's competitive. This is the game. Y'all like to call it the game, right? So you got to play the game. You got to get to the next level. Let's treat it like a game since you think it's a game. Got to get to the next level. You on level one. Except level one ain't easy. See, it's the reverse in the real world than the video game level one in the real world is hard it gets greater later it gets easier as you go up unlike a video game it's easy level one and it gets harder it's the reverse so you need to thug it out you need to work you don't need to give up and get emotional stop getting emotional this is what the, the business entails now you got this equipment that you pan on, and it's part because Margaret, there can't be a hundred pieces. So, and it was a hundred stops. And go tell that to a FedEx guy or a UPS guy that's doing 180 stops a day. Go tell them that. They home by six, seven, eight. They ain't taking them two days. You too slow. You shouldn't be in the facility four hours. A hundred pieces, you should load that in 45 minutes. Forty-five minutes to an hour, you should be gone. You should be if you get to the facility at six, get there at five. Get to the facility at five. Load your truck. Be out of the facility by six, no later than six fifteen. You need to be at your first stop by six thirty, no later than seven. Your route is dense. You already told me your route was dense because you told me how many minutes each stop was. 
So on the new, you should be able to complete that. No, on the new, you should be able to complete that in 10 hours. And that's a long time. But that's what I would expect for a person on the new. 10 hours. Now you need to work. Man, how can I knock 10, 15 minutes off this every day? Next week, you need to get it done to nine hours. The following week, you need to get it down to eight. It's possible. I had a guy, Hector. He was able to be back with that same amount of stops, those same amount of pieces, except from my warehouse to Dynamics was 30 minute drive within itself. And he was back by 11 o'clock every day because he was a FedEx guy that quit FedEx and came and worked for me. So he was used to twice as many stops. You just slow. Second thing you need to do is learn how to optimize your route. You need to learn how to move your van. You need to learn how to be more efficient. When you get to a stop, you go in. Boom. I'm not trying to go way back there. If the security guy is at the front door, hand him the package I him signed for. I'm gone. The farther you walk, the more places you go into the building. It's taking more time. Efficiency is the game. Efficiency is the name of the game for this. Boom. You back to the van. You put the mag liner or the dolly back in the van. You That next stop, you need to be pulling that to the door. You got a back door and you got a side door, right? Yeah. Boom. Whichever door you use, once you put that dolly in, that next stop, because it should already be optimized, you need, when you putting that dolly in, you need to be pulling that stuff to the door. So, boom, when you get to that stop, that shit already right there. You open the door, you grab that shit, you put the mag down on the ground, you grab those boxes, you put it, you go in the facility. Yeah. If it's a white castle, you go... First there, listen, I don't give a goddamn. It could be the guy sweeping the goddamn floor. Me, it could be the guy sweeping the goddamn floor. If he got a White Castle's uniform and I'm delivering the little carts that they put the 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 the, the burgers in, boom. Sound right here, Pimp. They go to manager over here. Man, I ain't got time. This is for y'all, man. Sound right here. Just, I don't know. Just take the finger and just do like that. As long as you do like that, I'm closing it out. I'm gone. You know why? Because I have proof that I made the delivery and it was there and it was with somebody that worked there. If they require you to take a picture, boom, gone. You want to go in, you want to talk to people. Yeah, I have a delivery for White Castles and you in White Castle. Uh, they flipping burgers and shit. They sending you off and all this shit. You laughing because you know, damn, he, man, this dude know everything. You damn right I know everything because I've been there before. You waiting and shit. They got you waiting over there like a goofy. You dig what I'm saying? I'm already done hit the guy that's outside that's sweeping the, and taking the garbage out of the bin. I didn't even have to go in. I see him. Boom. I dropped this shit right there. Boom. But do me a favor. Boom. I'm back in the van. I'm putting my mag liner in. I'm pulling the next stop to the front and I'm gone. You can pussyfoot around all you want, but I know the name of the game. It's, an e it's efficiency and it's time. Now, I just did 20 stops in that hour to your 10. I'm not worried about claims and all that shit because I got a signature. I was just, he had a White Castle uniform on. What was his name? Man Man. Man Man work at White Castle? All right, well, yeah, you do got the picture. All right, well. <laughs> Hey, man, you tweaking. You tweaking, man. So, man, you need to call them people back, man. You need to tell them, man, you, you want your account back. Or you need to go somewhere else and you need to speed up your time. You don't need to be four hours to load 100 boxes. You tweaking. That's half your day gone. You've been there since six That's and you I'm just saying. leaving the warehouse at lunchtime? 100 boxes? I done moved third bedroom apartments to third bedroom apartments in less than that time. Across town. I done ran up three flights of stairs, loaded a whole apartment into a truck, including wrapping the shit, taking the bed apart, taking the tables apart, loaded the truck, drove across town, ran that shit up three flights of stairs, put the bed together, put the table together, screwed the legs on the bottom of the couch, unwrapped all the shit. Put the mirror back on the dresser, ran back downstairs, forgot the drill, had to go back downstairs, get the drill, the drill, the, 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 the mirror into the dresser. And you mean to tell me you got a, a final mile, small parcel route with 100 packages and it took you four hours to load 100 packages on a van? You too slow. So what you need to do is 
Get faster. I don't want to hear that shit. This ain't the route. It wasn't. It was you. See how I broke it down and just found out what was going on? Four hours. Them four hours, you should have had 40 stops done. We'll give you 30 stops. Let's say it took you an hour. 30 stops done. See how I just broke it down? You sitting up here making excuses like, more? no, no, no. See how I just broke it down and, and, and made you tell? Four hours. So what I'm, Mark, right, listen. When I no. start, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I, you know, got the hang of everything, you know what I mean? And I knew how to do it. And I started, you know, moving like that. Um, they was, they ain't like that shit. Like, you know, <laughs> they ain't like that shit. Like, you know, I, 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 I had, I had, I don't know. I was in there, you know, training my driver, showing her what to do. You know, they ain't, they ain't like that How can shit. you train your driver? You don't know what to do. Of course they didn't like it. You know why they didn't like it? They like how she in here training somebody. It took her two days to do a hundred pieces. How can you train somebody and you don't know what you doing? What do I talk about? You steady proving everything. See what I mean, y'all? Everything I tell people to do, people don't do it. They come watch all the content. They they got the blueprint on what to do going in, and then they still go do the opposite. You don't know what you're doing, so how are you going to train somebody? And then you wondering why you said, well, they mad. They ain't like that. Of course they didn't like it. They looking at you like, man, how she training her? And she don't even know what the hell she doing. It took her two days to do 100 pieces. You a business owner. What do I always talk? No, I don't want to hear what you guys say. I don't want to hear shit you got to say. I don't want to hear it. You know why? Because you decided to be a business owner so that in order for you to be able to train anybody on how to do anything, you need to be efficient in doing it yourself. How can you train somebody on how to be successful when you're not successful? How can you train somebody on how to be efficient when you ain't efficient? It's just like people we talk about making content. How can you tell somebody how to be successful when you only been doing it a year or two? That's why so many people fail. Everything I told you, what was going to be faced up against, you coming back here telling me you was faced up against it and you failed and you had the blueprint for free. And you got emotional and cried and went and cried in the car. I felt like he was playing with my money. He wasn't playing with your money. You was playing with your money because you weren't getting the work done. Let me explain something. Let me explain something to you. You didn't finish the route. What you mean? It I took never you to the package. Yeah, you did. It took you two days to do the route. That means you brought back packages the first day. The route they gave you that day, you didn't finish it. You had to finish it the next day. So that means the first day you brought back packages and you had to finish the first day's route the second day. So what do you mean you didn't bring back packages? No, they let you they they know the they know the route take all day. You no. take the packages home. Trying to tell the route, you, the route to listen, listen here's the thing the route takes all day but it's done in a day natasha not two days it's a route it's a daily route it's a dedicated route you're telling me something that's easily done it's easily done a hundred pieces is not shit in courier work a hundred stops is not shit in courier work you have people out here right now in december doing 200 stops and home for dinner. Right, but they I stops just, is two minutes apart. No, I just told you where your problem was at. You're taking too long to load your van. It don't take four hours to load a hundred pieces on a van. A hundred, uh, four hours to load a hundred pieces. What are you doing? wasn't me Mark. i'm telling you that I, I gotta wait on this guy to do so, anything so you mean to tell me this guy got everybody off and then after he got everybody off you were still just there another two and a half three hours 
and with Yo, with no I, other I, vans I, there, he there. just was, was still to. There. Okay, so here's the thing, Natasha. Were your pieces on on your dock when you got there? Were some of the pieces no, they, there? No, they in the no, they in the warehouse. Good. All right, were were other people's pieces where they needed to be? No, it was all like t it was. It just came off the semi. So none of it's in order or anything. So how did those other people leave? How did all those other drivers leave hours ago and you still there hours later? How were they able to get their stuff? I'm not sure if they came afterwards or, or what. Well, you said you was the first one there. No, the, the, the day that it took me four hours, that's the rest. that was my first day. Your first day is going to be your worst day, Natasha, because you never did this before. So why would you get frustrated and throw in, throw in the towel? You never done right, carry so, work. You okay, never ran so, a business. Okay. Right. But but it's it's so the drivers is it's probably like me and one other driver maybe, and I don't know some guy they pulled off the street, and maybe it took me two hours that day because I was moving. I was moving faster. You know, because then I got the hang of, you know, scanning my own packages, you know, but I got to wait on this guy to kind of, you know, I just can't take his computer and you know what I mean? Like he got to set it all up. I can't just, I'm telling you it was the company. It wasn't me. I don't believe you. Then one day, then one day when I came there to pick up some packages because he's rushing me because he wants to leave the warehouse, it's only 12 o'clock. But okay, I stop, I come back so I can get some more packages for them. 12 o'clock? Why are you still there at 12 o'clock? Why are you still there at noon? No, no, no. I was saying I had stopped my route so I could come get some more packages because he wanted me to, I wanted to pick up some more packages for the following day. Why? Right? So I'm saying that he wanted to leave early. Why would you stop? No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. So the reason you stop, 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 stop. Oh, come on. You you were you worried about the next day instead of working on what you're trying to complete the first day. Why are you worried about tomorrow? You got work in front of you that needs to be completed. You saying they don't they don't got your shit pulled for today. It's taking all day. You push, putting the blame on him. So you going to hold on. So you going to stop a route to go waste more time for some shit for the next day, which to me I've never even heard of that before. They just going to let I you take I'm to I'm, I'm helping him. You helping him? You just shit it on the guy. What you want to I'm finna get off this live. I I'm finna get off this live. Hey Natasha, good luck. Good luck, oh my man. God. Good luck, man. Cause you ain't you ain't got it, man. It ain't in you. It ain't in you, man. It ain't in you. It ain't in you. I t I don't gotta hear you out because everything you say don't even make sense. That's How you going help? That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to do my work. He's calling me. Fuck him. him. Yo, listen to me. Fuck dude. What the fuck has he got to do with you? You got a business to run. You got shit on your van that need to get done, and you worried about tomorrow talking about helping him. He you don't he don't work for you. He work for the three PL. Fuck, dude. What are you worried about? You got shit on your van that need to get done, and you talking about tomorrow? Let me go get some packages for tomorrow. You can't even get the shit done that you working on today. The hell you talking about? And then you want to sit up here and go back and forth with me and everything that I ain't told you what you was gonna be faced with. 10 months ago when you was talking this box truck shit and I said, Natasha, box truck ain't for you. Now I'm looking at cargo van ain't for you. You need to sell your cargo van and whatever personal car you got, you need to go drive that and maybe try it with that and think about a cargo van later. Because you worried about everything that you shouldn't be worried about. You talking about this guy, you just shitted on this guy. Now you talking about helping him. Then you talking about getting packages for the money. I ain't never heard that. Most of these packages He's come on the truck He's the day before. I went hit. Most of these packages come on to the facility of the 3PL the day before. So nine times out of ten, they may not even have the freight for tomorrow's run at the 3PL at that particular time. You can't even get the shit done for the day and you worried about tomorrow and helping this motherfucker. 
Fuck dude. What is you talking about? Now you got me cussing on a Sunday because now you done got me frustrated because you steady want to go back and forth with somebody who done did this, this done proved to you that I know what I'm talking about because everything I told you you was going to be faced again, you was faced again and you did the wrong thing. Then you went and bought you a yellow van. I said, don't go buy a yellow van because ain't nobody going to take it. These companies want all white equipment. Now you got to go spend $4,000 to get a Rhino 3M wrap. But you can't do that because you said you ain't got no working capital because you couldn't get the tire fixed. <laughs> then you said you kept your job and you got to pay a driver. So now you're not making money because you got to pay your driver. And I said, OK, well, and no, you got to pay your driver. So that, that means you got somebody to cover me when I need coverage. That's what all. did I tell you? I told you this was a full time business. This is a full time business. You had a job. We had this conversation eight months ago, back in April, whenever we had that dialogue. And everybody said, Mark, you're too hard on her. Now you see why. That's why you should just let Mark leave Mark alone and let Mark do what he do. Because Mark know what he's talking about. Mark can read a person and be like, yo, they ain't, go they ain't got it. No, Mark, you shouldn't. Okay, well, then guess what? I saved the ass. How much you want for your van? How much you want for it? You want to sell it? I don't need it. No, Maybe I'm somebody in the awesome. chat need it. All right, so this is what I need you to do. I need you to toughen up. I need you to toughen up. I need you to listen. Stop watching my content and doing what you want to do. Because clearly what you want to do is not right. What I'm telling you to do is right. But you want to do what you want to do. A yellow van? Did you think you a painter or something? I said all white. Now they're telling you, no, we can't take you because you got a yellow van. Toughen up. Toughen up. Stop being emotional. Go out there. Put your head down. Do the work. Ain't nobody yeah. going to have sympathy for you. Nobody's going to help you. You're a business owner. You're going to get hated more than you get helped. You're going to get hated more than you get helped. This is what you wanted to do. Welcome to the real world. All right. Welcome to the real world. See, over here, we don't sugarcoat because we ain't got shit to sell you. I ain't got a $10,000 mentorship course. So I'm not going to be your friend. I don't give a goddamn if somebody out there like, man, what more going there? I could get to. I'm straight. Mark, why you keep saying you straight? Because I am. <laughs> I don't have shit to sell you. So the only thing I can give you is the honest to God truth based on experience. And clearly, we know you know I know what I'm talking about. It's obvious. So what I don't understand is why would you go do the opposite and why knowing what I've told you and you you get faced with it, why do you fold? No, I only I only walked away because I felt like he was messing with my, my money. He Yeah, he was messing with your money because you messing with them. He ain't messing with your money. But you I, on the new. I was, I was, Listen, what happened when on your first day of uh, 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 high school, Freshy Hell Week? You get messed with. They stuff you in the locker. They give you a wedgie. What happened when you knew on the deck? If you ain't plugged, see, you from Philly. You come here and you go to the county and you ain't plugged. You ain't either people or you folks. You a neutron and they put you on a, 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 a deck. Man, you going to be washing somebody draws or something. You better be plugged. You better be plugged. Coming from here, you better be somebody. You better be plugged so they can be like, man, what you is? You Blackstone? You Vice Lord? You folks? All right, your people over there. No. Because if you if you ain't plugged, they going to put you somewhere. You're going to have to go ahead and fend for yourself. The point that I'm trying to make is you're on the new. And I've told you this a million times. You're going to have to work your way out of that situation. You're going to have to get on the ground and you're going to have to work it out. You on the new. You got to you got to prove. You got to let people know who you are. You got to you got to you have to stake your claim. 
I'm telling you, I did. They ain't you like You gotta that. make a you gotta make a name for your it, it's not like that because you didn't make it like that. You're a business owner. It don't just get handed to you. You have to go take what you want. I've been telling you this, Natasha. How long you been watching me? For over a year, right? Um, See, you needed almost. this. You needed this. You needed this. Just accept it. Accept it. Yeah, I mean, you know. No, first of all, you too passive. See how you talking? You know, nah, man, nah. Nah, it ain't nothing funny. Take what you want. Stop being passive. Go in here and lean. Ain't nobody going to give shit to you. Ain't nobody got to help you. Ain't nobody got to do nothing. You have to make shit happen. And when shit don't go your way, you don't get emotional and quit. I need you to do better, Natasha. Me and you, we haven't had this. I haven't had to put you in a circle in about six, seven months. I got a lot of flack for putting you in a circle last time, but I think now people are like, damn, I owe Mark an apology. I see why he put her in the circle. I'm telling you, it wasn't even like that. Like Natasha, everything you just said, you told on yourself. It took you four hours to load a hundred pieces. Well, that was my first that was my first day. But okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. Like, you know, then I you was, just told me was, you stopped I, your I, route. I, I then you told like, me you stopped your that. route in the middle of the day to go pick pieces up for the next day. What? That that shit don't he, even make he sense. Ran, he ran the warehouse. That's what he needed. So, you know, I was trying to be a... So know, he called you? Partner. He called you and yeah. asked you to do that? Yeah. He, and he, he said, he, what did he say? You know, this, was, this was for something that wasn't even my route, you know? I thought I was... And you know what you tell him? And you know what you tell him? Man, I ain't nowhere near that. I'm on my route. I'm trying to get this shit done. I ain't near the warehouse right now. You know why he did that? Because it was somewhere they messed up at, and you on the new, so you the flunky. He wasn't going to call somebody that got tenure and tell him to do that flunky ass shit, because they would have known better. Dude, you think I'm going to stop my route to come pick some shit up that ain't necessary to be done until tomorrow? Clear my lap. Click. But see, he wouldn't even got to clear my line click because he wasn't going to call them. He's calling a new person, asking them to take on extra work. And you're on the new and they know. Think about it, Natasha. Think about it. Use your brain. You're on the new. They're going to call a person who obviously is not getting their route done to take on more work. So clearly that's something that was fucked up on their end that needed to get out and they needed to get it off the dock. Let me tell you how this shit works. With 3PL companies and retailers. They have a system where the retailer can see when the deliveries are and what's on the dock. Their job at the warehouse is to get it off the dock for the day. As long as it's off the dock, they in the clear for the day. The shit rolls downhill. It was something that needed to get off that dock because Crate and Barrel is probably looking at it like, yo, this shit need to get delivered today. Why is it still sitting on the dock? Y'all said y'all can handle delivery in this market. But y'all still got shit sitting on the dock at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Once it gets removed off the dock, it gets cleared out of the system. So Crate and Barrel sees that it's out for delivery. So now the people at the 3PL, it makes it seem like they did their job. But ultimately, now the, 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 the frustration is now and the, the, the bullshit is placed on you. See, he didn't call an experienced person with that bullshit because they knew the play already. He called a person who's less experienced who can't get the work done. They're calling a less experienced person who's not even finishing their route and adding more work to them. You see how that doesn't make sense? You see how you got played? No, you see how you got played. No, do you see how you got played? I want you to see how you got played. Fuck, dude. He did have somebody. Fuck, dude. Why are you making me curse on a Sunday? Fuck, dude. You are a, a contractor. You're not obligated. You came and you picked up your route. Dude, call me, man. I'm not near there. I'm way out somewhere. I'm 20, 30 minutes away. I'm doing my route, man. I ain't. I can't do it. Yeah. So, man, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? You tweaking, bro. I'm going to hit the button for you. And I gotta you go. tweaking. I, I got to go. You tweaking. Natasha, stop thinking like a, 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 a start thinking like a business person. I, I tell you this, I tell everybody this. You watch the content, that's why I'm upset with you. You 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 running off emotions, you trying to help people, you can't even help yourself, you training people, and you don't even know what you're doing. 
a hundred stops, please, man, please. That shit took all well, day. I'm telling you, it, it was a route. Well, welcome to the real world. All right, peace. Peace. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Natasha. <laughs> man, Natasha, boy, I swear I be having to get her together every six, seven months. <laughs> man, hey, y'all. <sighs> man, I didn't expect this show to go this long. All right, I'm sorry, but y'all got the 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 monologue and you know basically what I wanted to talk about earlier as far as running a, bi a business, how to plan a business going into 2024, the things that you need to consider uh, before going into business, and I guess God works in mysterious ways because not only did you get my lecture, you got a real case scenario on what happens when you don't listen to an experienced person who's mentoring you online for free. Everything that I said you will be faced against, she went through it. Some of the shit she would, did the opposite of what my, my, my live streams tell. Some of the things she faced head on that I told her she would face head on and she folded. But this is the real world, this is business reiterates what i talked about in the live stream you're going to be faced with challenges and it's it's up to you to conquer those challenges there's nobody going to be there to hold your hand all right so if this is not something that you can handle then maybe business isn't for you you got to be a dog you got to be it's dog eat dog you got to take advantage of people you got to use people you see how they using her so that they look good with Crate and Barrel, so that that Crate and Barrel, when they log into that portal, they can see that that facility warehouse, the dock is clear. So when people call Crate and Barrel service and say, hey, I got a, a scheduled delivery from 12 to 4, just making sure, yep, yep, we're looking at the portal now, yep, the warehouse is clear, so it's out for delivery. That's the way the game worked. They used her. They took advantage of her because that's business. You got to lean on people and take advantage of people too. I've been telling y'all it's true. It's competitive. It's dog eat dog. You got to eat people's food. Lean on it and then play with the money. I got to go, man. <laughs> but y'all got a, a, a good learning lesson today from a real <laughs> scenario. This is the best live stream I've seen in a long time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, this is what we do over here, man. This is what we do over here, man. How's everybody doing? He almost says, <laughs> said, man, y'all gotta go back and look at the live stream because I seen the live stream movie, but I was so focused on her that, man, she gotta go do some push-ups, curl. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the replay and look at the chat tomorrow because I see y'all had a ball tonight. Why they hating on you, she capped. <laughs> uh, hey man, there's some good content. Uh, you get 12 minutes to unload, that is stop. You 50 minutes to load your truck at Amazon. Yeah, four hours to load 100 pieces, small parcel. It's too long. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for checking in, man. I'll see y'all one day this week with another live stream. Hope everybody learned something. Peace out.